welcome, welcome, welcome to your mom's house with Tom Segura, Tom Segura, and Christina Pajitsin. Welcome to your mom's house. Walking down the street, introduction to my song. I got a gun, got a Terminator gun. Machines within, machines within. Practice on my rhyme, practice on my flow. G16100, machines within, machines within. F all the haters, much love, no hate. I don't know what's real and what's fake. I don't give an F, walking down the street, hatchet crew singing happy Halloween. Working on my rhyme, working on my song, I got a gun, got a Terminator gun. Machines within, machines within. There you have it, Gene. What do you think? I think it keeps giving. Yeah. We didn't know. How are we to know that that, that song would just keep growing? We wouldn't know. No. That was by uh, Kinsey from Albuquerque. Oh, thank you. The country version. The country version. The country version. Can we, can we talk about the thing we haven't talked about yet that just happened at our house? When? Right now. We made breakfast. The nanny was here <clears throat> taking care of Ellis. You were cooking eggs. She was yeah. feeding him. And I think you forgot that she was here. Is what I'm. I'm hoping is what happened. That is what happened. <laughs> and you ripped a huge fart. Oh my gosh! I know. I did. <laughs> but you also did the dad thing, where you like looked at me and you made your like you bit your lip face, <laughs> yeah, as if to really punch it to me, like look yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. So was... clearly you forgot. I know. I did. I, I totally did. You know why? Because I was cooking. You know? You're frying bacon. Yeah. So whenever that happens, <laughs> I don't know, my mind just goes. Yeah. And I was I was making a omelet, <laughs> making sure the sides are, you know, clean on it, yeah. going around. Doing your thing. I felt it. I was like, oh, here's a big fart coming. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. And then you looked at me and you were like. <gasps> <laughs> She's I, right I, there. I was like, oh, shit. She was right there. Yeah. She didn't obviously she didn't say anything. No, but she heard that one, right? She heard it. She everyone heard it. The whole house heard it. Dogs, kid. Well, she hears our son fart all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mr. Tom, I heard your farting. It was nice. It was nice. Tom, it was very nice. You are the fart champion. You have a nice <laughs> pitch and a nice bass. She would never say that. I liked your Mr. Fart sound. <laughs> you would never ever say that. But she has three. She has three sons. She has three sons. Yeah. yeah. So she's heard this all. Yeah. It's good stuff. Anyways. Well, I feel terrible. <laughs> it, she's heard us do stuff. If she hasn't figured it out by now that we're animals, she's gonna find out. Yeah, she knows we, we're disgusting people. There's a lot to get into, Jean. So Why don't much. We, uh, open the show right. And then do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get into some topics here. We have a great guest. We got a coming. gun. Got a gun. Got a Terminator gun. <laughs> um, all right. Here we go. My jeans within. Your mom's house for the new year. This is 2018. And what a great way to start 2018, you guys. Mm. Mm. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, ready? Virginity is cool. Come on, come on. Virginity is cool. What up? What up? Virginity is cool. He's got it. He's virginity is cool. Come on, come on. Virginity is cool. What up? What up? Virginity is cool. Come on, come on. This shit is big time. Who is Randy? Don't bring anyone mother into this. Yo, mama in the fucking stand. Welcome, welcome, welcome to your mom's house. I did a little camera adjustment. Okay. So this is kind of, um, you know, every year you can't do the same thing you did the last year. Mm. So part of what we've committed to for 2018 for the show moving forward is kind of taking on a little more of a Christian angle yeah. <laughs> and um, sharing it with our listeners. I think we just lost about 
eighty percent of our well, you know what? subscribers here. Don't care because I know he'll provide. <laughs> I know Hey. Hey, I, I am too blessed to be stressed. You know what I'm saying? Comedy <laughs> works. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> you have to say and prayer. And prayer, my yes. friend. Yeah. Now, Virginity is cool. <laughs> you know that that guy too, he was like the older guy leading he, it. Yeah. He had learned yeah. um like expressions and <laughs> phrases from within yeah. hip hop. So he said, What up, what up? Oh come on, come on. <laughs> like he was trying to be like a real hype man. Uh uh, yeah, turn yeah. my headphones up. <laughs> he was listening to a lot of hip hop being yeah. like, and then I'll say, come on, come on. Oh boy. What up, what up? It sounds so absurd. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it sounds uh, so ridiculous. What about the punching? Because if you're not, if you're watching this yeah, on YouTube, it's, yeah. he punches low, middle, high. Come on, come on. And you can see the kids. <laughs> Like it, you know, you can't make teenagers think something's cool. You yeah. can't. You can't. Yeah. Either they think it's cool or it's not. cool. They really reluctantly get into they're it. Like, they're like, virginity is. is cool, and they're all nerds. And the only thing is, they just <laughs> haven't had their nuts busted yet. You know, right? Because once you do, you're like, no, no, virginity is not cool. Not Busting cool. nuts is cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's all they, I want to do. Of course. Well, that I and never thought virginity was cool. Nobody man. thinks it's And I had cool. a lot of religious Nobody. influence. And I was like, this shit sucks. <laughs> of course. It Jerking sucks. off feels great. I can't wait to stick it with someone. Of course. And also, if you have to tell people it's cool, yeah. it's probably not. Well, yeah, you're just trying to keep them virgins. And for what? For God, dummy. To save it for marriage so you can procreate in a so Christian marriage. So stupid. Dummy. I God remember, doesn't want you to have fun. I remember when we were really curious young. You know, I mean,. I tell a story about my dad talking to me about masturbation on stage, so I'll, I'll leave that there. But I remember <laughs> my aunt, we were like, what's masturbating? And she's like, well, masturbation is when you have uh, impure uh, <laughs> acts with yourself. Oh, my God. And we were like, okay, so like, should we do that? And she was like, no, because if you do that, then it takes away mm -hmm. from the love and feeling you have for your partner. <laughs> we were like, whoa. She's right. We were like eight years old. <laughs> we were like, okay. Oh. I guess I'll never masturbate. What are you going to tell our son? Dude, do it all the time. Do it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Try come, it out. Come to my shows. Do it in my green room. Do it. <laughs> Do, yeah. it, do it when you meet people. It, and, uh, and also, I mean, it was such a silly, I went to an, a Catholic school and it was such a, it's such a Herculean effort to keep children virgins. You know what I mean? It, it's such like a, an uphill battle. Why not just be like, look, you guys are fucking, We had polar opposite though, um, explanations. Yeah. Like my parents were basically like, virginity is cool. <laughs> and virginity is your cool. parents Come on, like, come on. Yeah. Feel it, feel it. Your parents were like, you need to shave your vagina so it looks yeah, nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's real yes. crazy. Well, my mo my parents were, um, you know, Euros. So the whole thing was like, if you are going to have sex, you let me know. I take you to the doctor. We get you pills. And of course, I was like, I'm never telling you anything. I'll go on my own. You do, you know. But yeah, the, the message was, you're going to do it. Don't be, stu you know, just it's be safe. So, crit my, they didn't bring it up. Then they talked about marriage. <laughs> then they talked about like, you know, I remember when I was dating a girl in high school and my mom one time, I was driving her somewhere and she just goes, out of nowhere, she goes, I hope you are treating her with respect. Oh dear. And I was like, I'm sorry? I didn't know what she was getting to. Oh dear. She's like, your girlfriend. Oh dear. I hope you are treating her with respect. You're like, I'm only coming on her tits, mom. I'm like, yeah, mom, of course I treat her with respect. And she's like, this is a... Uh, you are too young to be disrespectful. Oh, disrespectful. Yeah. And I was like, um, what do you want to eat right now? You know what I mean? <laughs> disrespectful is the word for, for, uh, virginity yeah. is cool. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Do the lead up, Tom. Come on. Come on. Come feel on. it. Feel it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> it gets more aggressive here. Virginity is cool. Come on. Come on. Virginity is cool. Come on. Come on. Virginity is cool. Come Whoa. on. Come on. Virginity is cool. <laughs> All right, thank you. He's got oh, them doing kind of a, a Hitler youth thing happening yeah. with this, you know. Uh, proper uh, credit for this. This is from Everything Is Terrible. Yeah. Dot com. This is a great site. Uh, yeah. We found a few treasures on here over the years. Yeah, but that you pulled, you were, you found this one. Or you it saw was tweeted it? to me. Oh, by one of the really mommies. Great. Really great. Virginity is cool. 
Oh. Well, it got me down the rabbit hole of of people who think virginity, like just Google virginity is cool. And you'll see a bunch of like totally brainwashed Christian boys being like, Jesus wants you to save it for the bond's marriage. That way it's special between a husband and and, and no. wife. Like they have no idea. Like they're 15 years old. If anything, I wish I could go back and lose my virginity <laughs> much younger and, and really exploit um, <laughs> some of the women around me at that age. Yeah, I agree because I think you and I both had... That th- like we're both actually, I think, serial monogamists at our core. Like I was, I was never able to be promiscuous. Yeah. And I, I part of me is like, ah, I wish I could have just turned off that button of like shame or yeah. conscience I had or too whatever. Much Catholic guilt. Yeah. And just be kind of a slut. Do you want to take time out of the marriage and do that, and then we come back or something? Is that what you're saying? Hundred percent. Are you serious <laughs> right now? I love this idea. I have the confidence <laughs> now to do it. So do I. Yeah. So how much time are we gonna? I don't know. What about Ellis and stuff? Who what cares? about him? It's your kid. It's your kid. Your kid. No, your kid. You got to raise him. Just take him with you. Do what I, my parents did. Take him to Club Med with you. I need to explore. <laughs> you won't eat my scrum. Let somebody else scrum. do it. What the, the scrum? Yeah. Stupid. Come on. Virginia. Come on, come on. Is <laughs> come on, come on. I mean, in our Catholic school, it was encouraged to stay a virgin. Like abstinence was the big message, which is so dumb. It's you little never sluts were not virgins. <laughs> Of course not. God, in your little Catholic schoolgirl outfits. You really got to be super brainwashed to go down that route yeah. of total app. Ab- You've got to be terrified of sex, honestly. Terrified. Terrified of sex or terrified of your parents or terrified yeah. of God. God. Yeah. Sad. There's some scary parents, I'm sure, who like the kids are like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, like they're really in fear. Like mom and dad are going to. Yeah. They're going to come in and they're going to smell my pussy at night. No. No, that's probably not. <laughs> 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 like Jessica Simpson's dad. Remember when she gave him a, he gave her a wedding ring? Yeah. Jessica Simpson was married to her dad before she got oh married to God. someone else. No, that's a common practice. You know that? Oh my God. In the Christian community, a father gives a daughter like a, a wedding ring, essentially. It's an abstinence ring. Oh, my God. And she gets to wear it until she gets married. Yeah. Thank God we had a boy. We have a boy. <laughs> yeah, but he can knock up some dumb bitch. I know. We really got to. We're going to fucking work on that. I want to give him birth. I want male birth control to exist, and I'll just sneak it in his cereal. Gotta see, we got to scare him. Scare that. Hell, yeah. Him. You don't Do want it. no babies? No. And I'll, dri- I'll drive in the neighbor, like bad neighborhoods and be like, this is where you'll have to live <laughs> if you have a kid. Yeah. The high school diploma, you, yeah. you won't be able to support no kids. Uh-uh. You ain't got no kids. No. no. No, it's terrible. That's why we have to tell them virginity's cool. Uh, mahalo, it's back. We're mahalo. back from Hawaii. Mahalo. You know, by the way, I don't. I feel like nobody who actually lives in Hawaii does the aloha, mahalo thing. That's, oh, that's like, for tourists. Yeah, like when you're staying at a hotel, they're like, aloha, <laughs> mahalo. <laughs> no, you're not. And Are like th- the, the fifth guy that walks by you in the hallway... You yeah. know, like a maintenance guy or something. <laughs> He'll be like, hello. And you're like, I, all right, I it's, got it's it. It's not. Nobody. Good morning. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Or even I remember in Jamaica, they, they don't say, everything is Irie. Like nobody. That's a, that's a white person. Yeah, they thing. do. They go, come on, come on. Virginity <laughs> is cool. Everything is Irie. Uh, we had a great time on vacation. That was great. It was really great to recharge the batteries, take time off. <laughs> We yeah. needed it, man. We needed it, and we got so relaxed. We uh, we we got a rental car. We went to the island of Maui. That Valley. is hilarious. <laughs> we got a rental car only because <laughs> we're staying there like a week, I think eight days, and one day, like third day, and I'm like, well, we got to see this place at some point. It's a beautiful island, <laughs> you know. So I go down to the front desk and I said, I want to be able to rent a car one day and explore. And they're like, Oh yeah, we we can set it up for you. I said, Great. How about in a few more days? So it's like, do it on day six. And they're like, okay. So day six comes around, and I'm like, really? Like, chilling at the hotel. <laughs> we, we haven't really left the hotel. No, which is a great thing. Fa- yeah. But that's how we do it. We but it's a nice hotel. So, yeah. you, you, lay by, you lay on the beach. Yeah. Chill out. So it's like, day. you know, I go down there, I go, they go, your car's ready. You know, give us your driver's license, blah, blah, blah. And then they say, um, you know, Leave from here. They give us a map. Do you want to explore um, this place? And I go, oh, she goes, everyone goes here. I think it's the road to Han. I, like, I go, okay, how far? She's got to be like a six hour, like a full day thing. I'm like, no. <laughs> Negative. No. 
<laughs> then it's like the next thing. <laughs> no. She's like, uh-uh. well, this one's pretty cool. And you can check out this restaurant, blah, blah, blah. And I go, how long is that? She's like, oh, I mean, it's not bad. That's like a 45 minute drive. And I go, all right. And she goes, so when you're done, you bring the car back here to the hotel and make sure you come back to us and tell us to close it out. Otherwise, you'll be charged for overnight parking fees. They'll mm-hmm. assume you're keeping the car. I said, okay. I get in the car with you. I'm not really saying anything. I'm like, I'm like, uh, all right, so we're going to go to this place. I checked it out. Here's the map. Um, you know. And you go, well, why don't we stop? And get a coffee first. I know you want a coffee for the road. Well, you've been really hitting the Starbucks hard. Yeah. You've been hitting a certain beverage order, a yeah. venti iced coffee, extra ice with just a splash of whole milk. And I know this because if I don't get it right for you, yeah. I have hell to pay. Yeah. So you've really been hitting these. And you hooked me up for Christmas. You made me a barista. I did. You got me like my own coffee grinds yes. and a little French press. It's nice. Thank yeah. you very You're much. You're going to work at Starbucks now like yeah. I did. Okay. So. Cheers. Cheers. There it is. That's your French press. Try it out. Try it out. So we uh, we found the one Starbucks nearby our hotel, and what happened? So we pull out, we drive maybe <laughs> a mile down the street. We park, we get a coffee, and we sit down. We just sit down outside of the place and yeah. sitting there with you. It's Have like rocking sandy. chairs, and yeah. we're sitting in these rocking chairs. The and I go, uh, hey, I got to tell you, um, I don't really want to drive to this uh, place <laughs> right now. <laughs> and you go, yeah, I don't want to do it either. <laughs> and I go, so what do we do? And you're like, well, let's hang out here for a minute so it looks like we're gone for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so we do. We just walk around. There's a few mm-hmm. shops. It's like their mall. Yeah, we we found the mall on Maui, basically. Yeah. The, the mall. So like... We've basically oh, replicated our home life favorite. in Maui. I'm still making an effort to try to do something. <laughs> so I go into Starbucks, and obviously the people working there are local people. So first they insult my coffee order, and then I say, <laughs> hey, uh, by the way, um, I wanted to check out something, but I don't want to drive too far because I'm still trying to make something happen. I just don't want to do the 45 minutes. Yeah. I go, is there something around here like 15 15- you know, like five minutes, minutes like yeah. a waterfall five minutes away. Is there anything like <laughs> semi close? I said, and they go, Well, and the lady mentions some beach. She goes, There's that beach. And I go, Oh, okay. Thankfully, the other lady goes, That's not 15 minutes. And I go, It's not. And she goes, No, that's about 30 minutes each Ooh, way. Oh, no. And I go, Shit. I go, There's nothing around here that I could drive to and see. And the lady goes, oh, I know what you could do. And I go, What? She goes, You could just walk down to the beach here. <laughs> That's how we feel. <laughs> and I go, yeah, I yeah, could. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, it's beautiful. And I go, yeah. I'm staying here. Like I stay for, I'm staying on this beach. Nothing I can go explore. And she's like, no. And I go, okay. So we walk around. We hit a couple shops. I don't know. We probably spend 30 minutes. I did have one of those delightful shaved ice things. Oh yeah. Those are real popular. I there. really like that. That was, was like the good. highlight of my week there. And then... Get in the car. Just just so people understand what we did, we found the mall and we hung out at the mall. Yeah. On Maui. It's shameful. Like we but we did the same shit we do at home except in Hawaii. Yeah. But not really planned. It just kind of, you know. It's just kinda of happened because that's kinda of trash people we are. Yeah. Like I went to the gap, bought some underwear. But you needed underwear. I did. I didn't pack enough. Anyways, we we didn't make. We didn't spend a whole day there. We just spent, no. like you know, enough time to convince the hotel people that we, we did something. drove somewhere. I don't know. Then I drive back. The same guy that had given me the keys outside was like, "Oh hey," I go, "Hey," and he's like, "Uh, you will you be needing it?" And I go, "No, no, no, we're done with it." And he was like, "You're done." And I go, <laughs> "Done," and he just goes, "Okay." <sighs> Walk back in. I go to the same lady at the front desk, and I go, "Hey, you can close us out." And she was like, "Oh." <laughs> You don't want it later? And I go, no, no, no. You could tell she wanted to say something, but she was too polite. You lazy fucking howlies. Yeah, but the thing was, we were enjoying our vacation our way. Our way, that's the thing. So No, you can't force it. That was pretty fun, though. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm glad we we went there. I'm glad glad we saw that beautiful mall. 
Yeah, it was a really nice mall. <laughs> no, but seriously, the beach was beautiful. No, everything was f- amazed. Everything was amazed. I flew into Oahu and did a show. Oahu. Oh, uh, oh, ha- Oahu. Hawaii. And I did a show Honolulu. Hono, Honolulu. And uh <sighs> That was really fun. Dirk dirk tick duck tick duck. Makalakalik tick tick duck duck Hawaii. We kept saying that song. That that song was playing everywhere for Christmas. That muck a luck a luck 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 is a Hawaii. Apparently, I also found out Christmas. that on in Hawaii in uh, those islands, uh, yeah. uh, uh, Joe Coy is like fucking, uh, you know, Justin Bieber, Lord it's Master, fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, he outsold you too. Those bananas, dude. <laughs> What? So bananas. They're like, yeah, he sold more tickets than you. So YouTube. bananas. Hey, before we have our guest coming, can we play this clip from Dr. Drew's appearance? Oh, sure. Just a minute. We have a guest on the way, but I, you know, I've been dying since Drew came here. In it is. Here. I know. And we can't stop talking well, about the Well, because we show. had this debate between us. We also had this debate um, and had listeners weigh in for years. It, I, hey, it's been a lifelong thing in my family. For for decades, long time, and to have a medical doctor weigh in on such an important issue, on such a, uh, you know, a, something an issue close to our hearts, it's a big deal. I'm reeling, and when sometimes I'd complain about the farts, she would say that you should be grateful for the farts because farts push the shit out. Now, is that true that no. farts push the shit out? It's not true. Shits push the farts out. <laughs> farts and shit are sent are sort of disconnected <laughs> phenomena. What? what? Yeah, yeah. They're sort of. They're sort You're of blowing my mind. I'm in my whole you, life. They, I'm they raised to believe. They can be a little connected, but obviously there's some connection there. But they they're independent. They're not. Like, shit still push the farts out. <laughs> they a shit will a fart will come out with the shit, but the shit still yeah. And the but she said the farts push the, the shit farts. out. Right. And it's right. a little different. Yeah. Yeah. And the farts just come out. They just are get. They just. So wait, it. you're Is saying they're they're not there's no causal relationship? Not really. <laughs> Wow. What? No. I mean, is this going to be the decisive word on the issue? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it's the first medical person. I mean, we could have a gastroenterologist come <laughs> in here if you want and see if... <laughs> you know what I love is how serious Dr. Drew took the question. Oh, yeah. He really handled it with, like, yeah. respect. Farts and shit are, ascent- <laughs> are sort of disconnected phenomena. <laughs> I, can't yeah. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I know. They, and this is one of those things that in our relationship, <laughs> this is one of the first things you told me about farts. Right, they pushed the so shit I out. So I took it as gospel. Right. Because your mom told you. I'm like, oh, your mom knows. She must know. Yeah. But I feel like and she And it was knew. a listener who proposed the opposite, that shit's pushed. And I was like, oh, my God, that makes sense. Yeah. Never thought they were completely disconnected. I would never. Just push the farts out? <laughs> you, you said that like, sand is not real. I did. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Yeah, obviously, there's some connection there, but they, they're <laughs> independent. They're not. <laughs> yeah, Do you think that uh, Dr. Drew, when he started his medical career like a million years ago, no. thought that he would be answering that question? I don't think so. <laughs> what? what? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, was the, that was the level of disbelief. <laughs> what? what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yes, yeah. you idiots. God. You know, shits don't push the farts out. It's just, to me, it's just so counterintuitive. I know. It's just, my whole world is blown. We had my folks here. I'm sorry that we didn't get them to Ugh. weigh in or see that, you know, they could have weighed in on you know, that You know what your dad said to me? What's, what we were said? watching Home Alone, and he goes, oh, is that is that Joe Pesky? And I just said, yeah. <sighs> what is going on, man? <laughs> and then you said, he said, Gerald Kushner? He goes, you know, who's not... Uh, <laughs> In the news much lately? I go who? He goes uh, Gerald Kushner. I go who? He goes Gerald Kushner. And I go Jared Kushner. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, why don't you know the name? Well, you talked to him about it this time. Yeah, because I'm trying to figure it out. Because I remember I talked to somebody once. He's like, oh, he should see a neurologist. <laughs> Like his brain's, you know. Going. I don't think it's that serious. No, it's not that serious. But it's also, I was like, oh no, it's not because it's also he's been doing it for thirty-five years. Like, <laughs> he's been saying everything incorrectly. So I was like, so that X is out brain. Then it's ear, like hearing, maybe. 
And then the other Maybe. thing is like, are you just not paying attention? And I think that might be yeah. ding, ding, ding. It's the last because one. he also, if you go like Gerald Kushner, and you go, you mean Jared? He goes, yeah, well, yeah, Jared. Like, so he's like, I don't really care. Yeah, I was just saying something similar to it. He 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 hears the details he wants to hear. Exactly. Selective. I'm hearing. kind of fascinated by it, honestly. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I'm like, well, I don't understand why you don't pay attention more. <laughs> I don't understand either, and I also don't understand why he makes so many noises to get up, like from the couch when he was kind of he leans back, and then he makes all these sounds just to lean forward. Like, why so many noises just to go from here to here? Like, I don't. Big effort. Yeah, it sounds. He got like... a clean bill of health. I was like, <laughs> okay. I went and had my physical. I told my doctor about it, and he was like, "Neurologist." And I was like, "No, dude, because he's not. He's he, it's 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 ongoing. It's, it's nothing consistent. New. Yeah. yeah, it's not a. Maybe it's not like, getting worse." And then I realized the time that I figured out that my dad doesn't actually read things that I that I think he reads. Yeah. So that also told me about paying attention. In other words, I remember one time I was like, read this article in Newsweek. And I was like, oh, man, it's a fascinating story. I go, you got to read this. And he's like, oh, give it to me. Because he was just sitting around in the house. I gave it to him. I came back, you know, 20, 30 minutes later. Can you believe it? He's like, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's really something. And I go, and then, you know, to think that he'd kill her. He's like, he killed her? <laughs> and I go, didn't you read the article? He goes, I, I must have missed that. And I go. I don't understand how someone could say I just read the article right. and you missed the climax, like the detail of yeah. that. Well, the Jews died in World War II? And I go, he goes, what happened? I go, Dad, I just asked you if you read the article and you said, yeah. Well, I just, I just skimmed through it. And I go, is this how you always read by any chance? Yeah. And he was like, yeah. And I go, yeah. Now, you know when you have like dots connect in your head about something one of your parents read? And I go... I was always wondering like how you could read fast and I was always wondering oh. like so it, and then another time I read a book and I was on a vacation with him and it was right after the 08 like financial collapse and I read this fucking 400 page book so he works in that world I go I brought this book I just finished it it's amazing I give it to him and like the next day he was like that was a really good book <laughs> and I go, you read that book. And he was like, yeah. And I go, no. it's 400 pages. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I knew a lot of the stuff in it. And I go, so do you like get to things and then skip over that part and then read the thing and then skip over that part? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, so now I'm putting together how you collect. You know what I mean? He well, does. Yeah, he has selective data collection. Yes. And the same when he listens to either That's of us what speak. It is. Yeah. He's not really listening to, he just gleans what he thinks is vital. Mm -hmm. And then it, it's not the whole story. And then, and then that's why it's like Gerald Kushner and Pesky. It's like, you know, he's saying like, I've got Pesky. the right idea, you know, like. But the thing is, though, those are like, you've never heard it, Joe Pesky. You've only ever heard Joe Pesci. So in order to make that adjustment, you have to disregard all the common ways. And Jared Kushner's name y yeah. is so popular. Right, because everybody knows. You went to Jared. It's been said in the news a million times. I think I have to shit. Really? You know, we got that squatty potty. You like it? I don't think so. Really? I gotta be honestly, because I shit on my tippy toes anyways. I always naturally put my tippy toes up. Yeah. So I feel like it, it's almost too severe of an angle for me. Mm. Are you into it? I kind of like it. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned that you you like the severity. Well, of I it. like that it like it definitely affects your cold. You know that whole digestive tract gets it in the that you know equates kind of squatting. Yeah, spreads your cheeks a little more too. I feel like I don't need that because I I actually spread them when I sit down a little. Mm. I gotta go. I gotta shit. Okay, this is a nice time to take a pause and see if our guest arrives Press here pause. momentarily. Just okay, ask. sorry. Uh, we just were we just been joined by our guest Josh Wolf, very young, very handsome, oh. father of eight. Father of eight. Of eight. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> father of three. Oh. However, yeah, I have grandkids. And how many you have? Oh my life! Do I really want to admit this? 
Yeah, why not? I have four grandkids. Isn't that Damn, crazy? Um, when you look at him, I have four grandkids. Yeah, you. Well, I mean, it's so banana. And you know, I tried to. Uh, so when my son was when he f- told me he was pregnant for the first time, right? And he goes, "You get to pick your grandfather name." Oh, right, right. So I was really excited about being able to pick my grandfather name because there's zero chance I'm going with Grandpa or Papa or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So my wife went with BB, which I which I like. I like. Okay. BB. Yeah. That's cool. So I I told them I wanted to be called LeBron <laughs> because I thought it'd be really funny if yeah. they were like, "Where are you going? We're going to BB and LeBron's house." I'm like, "That sounds like a that's hilarious, like a good place to be." Yeah. yeah. And plus, it would be it's not Grandpa. Yeah. And so my son said he said. Uh, no. And I go, what do you mean, no? You yeah. said I could pick it. And he was like, does everything have to be a joke? I'm like, yeah. yeah are like, you are you new? <laughs> I'm a comedian. Dude. Yeah, this yeah. is the way it goes. But I settled on JoJo. JoJo? So it's BB and JoJo. That's pretty That's cute. That's good. Can I tell you, this is a great segue, because my parents were just here, and their grandparents, and our son is two. Yeah. And he's, you know, he's saying a lot of words now and starting to identify people and... So my mom, but they don't see him that often. That's the thing is that they see him, you know, because they live in Florida. So my mom is Peruvian. We called her mother Noni. And, and my sister's kids call her Yaya. And, she, and I'm like, so what do you, you know, what's it going to be? She's like, who am I? Am I Noni? And I go, what do, you, what do you want him to call you? And she's like, how about Nana? And I go, okay, sure. And then I'm like, my dad, who's American, I'm like, Dad, what about you? He goes, I prefer grandfather. And I'm like, are you fucking serious? You want him to two. spit out grandfather? At two? And, and also, how fucking formal is that? He's like, that's what I want it to be. Does he live in the 1890s? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Does he? <laughs> on, a, on a plantation. I mean, so, grandfather? Grandfather. Yeah. That sounds like something from like, you know, like a 1940s movie. You're like, grandfather, read us a story. Yeah, I think he, juleps. he actually dreams of moving to those times. Into so. the 1940s? Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, all right. I mean, he, you know, he dresses super formal on the most relaxed day. We talk about it. Yeah. How he's like. Khakis. Like khakis, loafers, a belt, a tucked in button down shirt. I'm like, why don't you wear something comfortable? I'll go, I am comfortable. I'm like, I used to say the same thing to my grandfather who would never leave the house without a button down shirt, yeah. his fedora, a jacket. And I was like, you know, we're just going to get something to eat. He was like, yeah, this is what I wear to get something to eat. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you're wearing a fedora and a jacket and a button down. That's and he would look at me and he was like, yeah, but you look like you're fucking wearing pajamas. So yeah, yeah. Look at all three That's of us now. Thing. I know. We look like <laughs> shit bags. And we're on the internet. Well, the world is watching us. And we're like, I don't care. That's <laughs> crazy to think, isn't it? Because <laughs> our grandparents would have never thought of leaving no. the house dressed like this, much no. less to be seen in front of well, however I, many I people. I no. tend to agree with him, uh, you know, halfway there on certain things. Like for flying, you know, he goes, you know, He's like, you should see the way these people are fucking dressed on these planes. He's like, you know, when I was a kid, you wore a coat and a tie to mm-hmm. fly. Because that was considered like special. a special thing to do. You put on a coat and a tie to get on a plane. And I'm like, that's a little dramatic. But when I see guys bored in tank tops and like <laughs> you can see their armpits. I'm out. And I'm, I'm like, dude. Bruh. And, you know, flip flops. And you're like, come on, man. Like Flip flop on the plane Negative. is it. And then the foot comes up on the. <gasps> no. On the, uh, no. on the bulkhead. Shout out, CC, passenger shaming. <laughs> yeah. Guys, yeah, I had somebody cut their toenails no, bro. across the aisle. No. Cut their, Get he was cutting life. their toenails, and I leaned no. over. So I was in the window. The guy, there was a guy in the aisle no. next to me, and then guy in the aisle next to him. That's no. low-key way of saying I was in first class. But anyways, oh, so a window. <laughs> he's cutting him in first Joshua. class? So he's cutting his, and I, and I said to the guy next to me, I go, hey, man. No. I go, you got to say something to him. He goes, well, what am I going to say? I go, watch. And I, le- and I go, I lean, I, t- I tell the guy to lean back. Uh-uh. I go, hey, you can't do that. And he goes, I paid for this seat. And I was like, yeah, I paid for this one too. Yeah, bro. And he was like, what? I'm just doing it over here. And I, I was like. Listen, anybody who cuts their toenails know you don't know where they're going. Uh, yeah, of course. They're shooting, uh, they're like fireworks. Yeah. They're uh, shooting all over the place, yeah, right? Yeah. He's like, it's right over here. Fireworks. I'm like, no, it's not. It's They're everywhere. Uh, I said, and plus, it's gross, man. It's so it's, gross. It's like the dude at the Trader Joe's near my house who had a a baby possum in a baby Bjorn no. facing outwards. No. And I said no, to him, I go, why? I go, hey, what's that? He goes, it's a, it's a possum. I go, <laughs> 
I go, well, you you can't. And it was in the produce section. I go, you can't have a possum Ugh. in the produce section. He goes, well, I don't think there's any rule. I go, I think there is. Yes. And he goes, well, I'm not leaving until somebody tells me to. I was like, wait right here. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's about to come back and tell you to get the fuck out of here with your baby possum. Yeah. Like, what own. is, what are it's, people? It's totally, yeah. People are too comfortable in public It's now. too yes. informal. It's too informal. There's there's too much a lack. It you know it's like the clothing thing sounds like it's unrelated. It's all kind of relates to each other. Like if you're wearing a tank top and your fucking PJs and your house slippers on a plane, you're just it's that bleeds into every part. You're, then you're like, I'll bring a possum to the fucking. Yeah. You know what it is? I, like, I think it boils down to I think the the beginning of social media and this whole thing where we have to accept what everybody's doing all the time. Yeah. And if we're not accepting them, we're shaming them. So the guy is like, I'm the possum guy. You should be happy for me. I'm an individual. Yeah. And I think there's something, yeah, I think there's something in the, the, the anti-shaming culture. Now. Well, I think it started. Shame is good. True. Shame is good. Shame can be good, by yeah. the way. Yeah. I, the guy I, shouldn't be having a fucking possum. It's embarrassing. Yeah. A hundred percent. Not right. And not only that. What what is people's fascination? Possum guy is worse than reptile guy. Way oh, worse. Yeah. Reptile guy is normal yeah. but compared to that guy. What's the fascination with people domesticating wild animals? I don't know. It's yeah. a fucking. It's it, like when someone's like, "Well, I got a pet raccoon. That, why? Why? That you need a becomes, raccoon? You know what that <laughs> is? That's a lack of an identity. And they go, "That's my new yeah, identity. totes. You know, it's like people get so. I think we're all trying to figure out who we are and all this in yeah. in life. And I think sometimes. People lock into like one. Th it's like when someone's identity is weed or something, and you're like, you know, every post is like, I'm rolling a blunt, I'm smoking a joint, <laughs> yeah. weed, I got yeah, weed, I'm the it's weed 420. Guy. It's fun. And you're like, all right, like, is there any other aspect to your life and who you are than weed? It's like becomes their only thing. Right. It's just my whole life is weed. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Yeah. And I think that, like, yeah. animal people are like that too. It's yeah. like, you know, I'm the animal guy. It's there's, like, there's we get a, it. You're trying to like say something. You're trying to figure out who you are and you found this one thing that you like, so then you're just like, I'm going all in on, on the that identity. Thing, you know? But you gotta go all in on possum? That seems like uh, a really that's fucking well, crazy. There's a lady at Michael's Arts and Crafts here. Yeah. Uh it's the purple lady. And yeah. everything she wears is a different shade of purple, and she's always there. So that's her thing. Like, I'm the purple lady. I wear purple. When I was in high school, this reminds me, one of my friends, they found, they're driving, and they're animal lovers, and they found uh, a dead possum mm -hmm. on the side of the road and a baby possum next to it. So the mother had been killed. So they took in the baby possum, mm. brought it home, uh, started nursing it, you know, putting a little bottle yeah. of milk feeding it that way and come over and little baby possum sitting on her shoulder. I'm like, you just found this fucking possum. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's and, not good. And they're like, yep, and it's wonderful. And I forget they had a name for it, fucking Sharon or whatever. And Shh, You can't yeah. give it a human <laughs> name. <laughs> yeah. Sharon. And they, you know, all this. And then I remember it's like the next month I come over. I'm like, where's the possum? And they're like, we had to get rid of it. Of like, course. Why? And they're like, it's clawed open the mom's face it was like Rah! and he, just scratched you know why fucking of face open it's a wild animal, yeah, it's a wild yeah. animal. Yeah. I, you know what you you said something funny about like the being the purple lady and wearing clothes i have to ask you because i did this and i've never asked another comic if they did when you started doing comedy did no, you have funny. an idea going in like these are the clothes i'm gonna wear as yes. a comedian yeah. Yes. What was your? What was your? I, mine is the most embarrassing. No, what was it's yours? Not. What was There's yours? No way. Yours is more embarrassing. What, what than was mine. you? What, what did you decide your clothing was going to oh be? Oh my fuck! So I was touring with this girl, and it was hard for us to get. <laughs> I know, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. So there's a, she's still a headliner, and yeah. and it was hard for two women to get booked, and it still is on any club week so we came we up already with got this. one we had one last month that's what it is yeah, yeah, yeah literally yeah. she was no i swear here. to god yeah. I, I i was told she once was here in the first quarter of the year yeah. no i remember she yeah. did that joke i remember yeah. her i was told one time at the kansas city stanford and sons he goes uh, I, I already booked uh, two women this year i can't book you so anyway we had to come up with a stupid gimmick to get bookings and i was her feature act so we decided to be naughty and sort of nice i remember this tour you do. I and know exactly. So what you're fucking talking. embarrassing. Yeah. And she dressed up as like a Were devil. Were you doing screen grabs and like shining photos to your friends and like <laughs> mocking them? <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Like we you do of, of certain people's Instagram. 
<laughs> I do know who you're. <laughs> I'll just say I do know who you're talking about. I do know. Uh, who you're so embarrassing. So she dressed up like a devil, mm-hmm. and I wore a white dress. And I remember at the time I asked my then boyfriend, fiance, I go, Tommy, is this bad? Is this embarrassing? And he didn't fucking tell me I'll tell you the truth, how though, bad man. it was. I honestly, and this is, uh, I'm being totally honest. But it helped I us get booked. I think it was that bad. So, I have to tell you, at the yeah, time, yeah. Come on. people were doing that. I, yeah, I didn't think we it was. We had to. I don't think to get it's booked. as, like, it's not the, le- it's not like, oh, this is the coolest thing ever. It's not <laughs> as shameful as you think it is. I agree. Like, when you showed it to uh, me, I. No, it really isn't. It was like I understood that it was like a marketing thing, and you guys weren't over the top with it. She's wearing red, you're wearing white, and it was like yeah, it, it was so it was it was gimmicky. It's not like your whole no, act. No, I was took like, a picture with a halo. I so. agree with Tom. Not no. really. That. Wait till no. you hear. Okay, what was your what I decided? Did you I, have one? <laughs> no, I I never had one. I I do remember I'm that show you a picture. Oh no! Oh my god, I'm so excited. The, I I remember thinking that. <laughs> So I'm like I'm just getting into stand up, and also like who am I gonna be and da, da, da. and I thought that like the sloppier, and like the less I put into mm-hmm. especially stage, the better. So I was wearing like t-shirts, but then like if that t-shirt had a hole in it, I'd be like that's that's, <laughs> that's my comedy hole. Yeah, and then I remember one of my friends was like, hey, you know, you really you really look like shit uh, <laughs> on stage. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, like I'm kind of <laughs> kind of trying That's to. That's what I'm going for? And he was like, you know, it, it's not appealing. And I was like, yeah, but I'm like, I'm not that guy. I'm not like the yeah. the, the clean cut guy. And he goes, I know, but from an audience perspective, I want to see at least something just pleasant to look like somebody put together somewhat. That you makes know? sense. That you yeah. don't have to look like a like a slob. That's what I was going, they don't want you to look doing. dirty. I was trying to look yeah. Well, I'm going to have to know Josh's now cuz he brought know, it up. It's got to be good. I'm going to find you. So what happened was, I like, remember can I Google it or no? Uh oh, it's right here. Were I re- you, were I, you the wolfster? Like did you have like a wolf? Do you wear a wolf costume? <laughs> Worse. <laughs> I remember thinking. I remember thinking to myself. I got the picture right here. Seattle days? Seattle. Okay. So I remember thinking to myself, all right, how am I going to stick out? What is going to make What is gonna make Josh Wolf stick out when they so look excited. at these guys yeah. on stage? And I thought the first thing I thought was, you know, the, Josh Wolf's going to wear vests. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my first headshot. Okay. I have a polka dotted vest on underneath. That's the hat I always wore on stage. <laughs> And I had a ponytail. Oh, the ponytail. And a long, and, and see that? And a leather jacket. Wow. You know how you look like the guy in Windy City Heat? Perry? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that might be. Look at the hair, dude. That's the the hair ponytail. Yeah. Beautiful. And it's like a long, I, I think I have a better shot. What year is this? That's got to be. Did you do porn? I then? wish uh, there'd been a better excuse for that. This is um. This is beautiful. Yeah, you, this is pretty great. I'll send you the picture if you want to. Yeah, you email we want to post it. To me? Absolutely. So I can pull it up and show it to yeah, people. Yeah. Oh yeah. Email him right now. Yeah. Um, can pull it up on screen. Okay. It, do you want that one or do you want to look at? See now, there's a couple. That's bad, uh, Josh. That was bad. Is it? I don't know. I think I feel like mine's worse. But it's worse, also. Though. But it also feels. You know, like I tell you this. Is it worse it than feels, that? Oh my god. No, that's like the total comedy <laughs> headshot. Send me that one. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. Yeah. Right, that's because that's a combination of yeah. every comedy. It's the worst headshot of all thing. time. But I was like, here's the thing. I have terrible. That was really good. I have terrible, terrible, terrible Jew hair, right? And wait, so, you're a Jew? Hundred percent. Oh man, we gotta well, change the whole. I know. We gotta change the whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, gotta enter through a different door. <laughs> <laughs> we don't normally. Um. Yeah, you know, I got it right there. Yeah, so I was like, you know, I, uh, in order for get to get my hair, I have to go to the black salons to get the product to really what? Yeah, because the Jufro (laughs) hair is the worst. So in order to get it to look like that, I had to get it wet. I had to put the product in it and keep it in a ponytail until like five seconds before. The picture, and then I let you it down. You motherfucker, you! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said it. There you go. Yeah. That's for you. Yeah. It, it, it was. Oh, um boy. But the vest, oh. I think, was a bad decision. But I feel like okay, the vest was kind of a '90s R and B. It was within the time. It's color it's me like, bad. Yeah, it was kind of hip, right? I, I guess so. You know, I remember because I started with with Joey Diaz and Brody, and so crazy. Wow. We had long talks about this. 
Well, Josh and I did a few oddball dates. Remember a couple of years mm-hmm. ago, I did oddball, mm-hmm. and I was just like, "Tell me Diaz stories." Well, you know, Joey used to so crazy. Joey used to go on stage in a three piece suit. Mm, I could see that at two hundred and. 20 pounds max Mm -hmm. yeah look at (laughs) that buddy looking good now first of all i bought that shirt with my very first structure credit card structure did you not have a structure credit card i fucking loved i like your hat i mean right yes because structure for those of us back then who didn't have any money it made me feel fancy yeah, and, Do you know str- what I mean? and also I was like, this is like where dudes with style. By yeah, that yeah. <laughs> I thought too. <laughs> this yeah, is pretty cool. It was right next to the express store. Yeah. They and you would the guy go in the structure, the girl would go in the express. Yeah, I thought. Oh, express. So there, is this yeah. a structure thing? Here? Oh yeah, that's a structure. Th- that's how express. did they fall out? I feel like they had like a good kind of cornered thing of like it was, you know, it wasn't cheap, but it wasn't like step above s- chess king. Yeah. <laughs> right? A step above Chess King. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but not quite I like it. It's fucking crazy that, like, uh, it, the structure clothes. That hair is amazing. You it's know what I wish? So I wish bad. you still had this look now. Because if you did this now, you would stand out. People would be like, who's the 90s guy? I would definitely lock up jewelry around this guy. <laughs> oh, would you? I think so. Where would you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That guy is the one thing that I'm looking. He is missing a chain. Yeah. yeah. He need. Don't you think he needs a chain? Jewelry. So what yeah, year is yeah, this? Jewelry. <sighs> Jewelries. Uh, I'm gonna call this '95 or yeah. six. And how long have you doing stand up at this point? Maybe two. You know, the first time I ever. Not the first. But the, well, actually, the first time I ever got on stage, I was 15. Really? 15. And uh, damn. The fourth time I ever got on stage, luckily or unluckily, I had to open for Sam Kennison. Oh my God! It was fourth the time was the, ever. Okay, I'm in San Antonio. Nineteen years old, I think, maybe twenty, nineteen, twenty, and um, I, I did a comedy competition contest, not competition, yeah. at a bar, and there were five of us, and I had done comedy maybe two or three times before when I was in high school. And uh, it has, it's been a while since you've done it. At, at yeah, day, yeah, but I mean, even at that age, you know, I was basically the first time I ever got on stage. I asked the guy who put on the show, "What should I talk about?" He said, "Talk about what you know." And what I really knew is that my parents fart all the time. So I did five minutes about them it's farting, like our son, if yeah. he did stand up. Yeah, I closed, and it was so funny because my mom didn't know what I was going to talk about. And so when I walked on stage, I could hear her. She was in the front row with one of those cameras, you know, zit zit, pick. Yeah. And then I started to talk about her farting, and it got slower, like z z, <laughs> you know. Right? Uh, but but I closed with a story about how we were driving down the Mass Pike, yeah, uh, when I was a kid, and my mom was farting like crazy in the car. We were in the back of the station wagon, with our head out that you know the back window, yeah. And my dad pulls over on the freeway, and he goes to my mom, Ellen, you gotta get out. <gasps> and she was like, "What?" And he goes, "You're killing. You're really killing the car. You gotta get out." She goes, what do you want me to do? He goes, I don't know. Walk it off. Something. <laughs> so she walked up and down the side of the highway for like five minutes. Farting. Just letting it air out. You know, she's like a walk farter. Like, oh, you know, yeah. man. So those are the jokes I had done. Yeah. That's so good. I, That's solid. I yeah. go to San Antonio. So I, do I do my stand-up. Especially for like, by the way, a third or fourth third time. Third or fourth I mean, time, crazy, right? crazy, yeah. So I go. I win because the bar was packed full of my friends. Yeah. Sam Kinison's coming to town. His opener, Carl LeBeau. You know Carl? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. So Carl's dad at the time, and I think, I hope I'm not uh, having, m- messing this up, but I think that's, his dad had died of, of AIDS, I think is what mm. he had died as dad, but he died for uh, of something on the way to San Antonio. They need a new opener for Sam Kinison. So they go, hey, who won that comedy competition? Oh my no. God. <laughs> and so I get a phone call in my dorm room. Oh my life. Hey, do you want to open for Sam Kinison? And I believe the name of the club in San Antonio was Sneakers. And wait, to be clear, at this time, is he a huge megastar at this time? Huge megastar. Okay. Oh so God. it's not like, oh, that's a kind of, yeah, he's, he's working. No, he's Sam Kinison. <laughs> right, okay, okay. He's Sam Kinison, and he's Sam Kinison to the point where he's at the point of his career where he's told everybody he's sober. Mm. Oh, right, right. He's not sober. He's not, yeah. But it was the 90s. You didn't have the internet. All you had to do is say, I'm sober. And people were like, he's sober. Yeah, and that's yeah. the end of that. So here's, talk about fashion, by the way. Here's how confused I am when I show up. 
I am wearing uh, black cowboy boots with the silver oh, no. ding at the tip. No, uh-huh. no. I have w- basically white acid washed, pretty baggy <gasps> jeans. Oh, this is awesome. Mm. This is awesome. I'm wearing, I'm confused because I don't know what to wear. I'm wearing a blue button down shirt, not tucked. No, I'm sorry, tucked in with the th- one of those thin black belts. I have my hair, it, that hair, in yeah. a ponytail. Mm. And I'm wearing that black leather jacket I showed you in the first over, right. over my blue button down shirt mm. tucked into my acid wash jeans. Mm. God, you look like such a dick. Uh, the <laughs> biggest dick in the world. <laughs> and I'm standing in front of a crowd. You know, as comedians, when people are there to see their guy. And that and it's guy. it's <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's not at a comedy club. It's at a rock club. Dude, tell me. I have so much anxiety. <laughs> like, do you do okay? <laughs> I'm so scared okay. right now. So, you know how much material you have fourth time on stage? Oh, man. Should you be standing in front of a rock crowd like mm-hmm. that? Sold out. Sold out. Energy just through w- the roof. Because he's, he's the first rock and roll comedian. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, th- it's people are not sitting down either. It's the first time, especially I had ever seen anything like that. And it's the fourth time on stage. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, my God. No MC. No. No MC. No. Just voice of God. No. To bring out you? Yep. And to go up cold <gasps> is like death. And like they, it would have been Carl probably doing, just slinging jokes for like 25 minutes. Just Well, that was my time, 25 minutes. <gasps> oh, no. Do you know how much material I had? That farting bit? Yeah, I had like three and a half if I stretched it a little bit. You know what I mean? I'm sweating right now. <laughs> okay. I am. So, Tom, I walk on stage <laughs> and... I, and no. This is how poorly it went. By it, by, and I have. I'm supposed to do 25 minutes. This is how poorly it went. By minute four, maybe five, they had already stopped heckling me, and they were just talking to each other. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> they had stopped. I was doing so poorly. Oh boy! They had just. They just. Gave they up. had I've just had turned and just yeah. started talking to each yeah, other. That's good. So for the next 20 minutes, you stayed up there that long. Stayed up there the whole time. I even. Repeated because I only had five minutes of material. I opened with five, that five, closed with the same five. <gasps> because I even said I was like, "Hey, for those of you who came in late, who might have missed the first five minutes of the set?" Because I knew I had five minutes left and I didn't know what the fuck else to talk how, about. How are you? Ti- oh how do they time sets? Then I like, had a little clock. One of those. You did. Yeah. Okay. Two show night. No. No. Does anyone show you mercy? Like, are you pulled off stage and are they like? Not Whoa. only am I not shown mercy, Bill, his brother and manager yeah clearly didn't watch my set mm. and He's after like, how's it going man everything <laughs> <laughs> after sam set and sam was visibly fucked up the first show yeah so they were like oh man how's he gonna he was like listen man for the second show we're, ch- we're gonna trying to get sam straightened out so we may need you to stretch a little bit no oh, my god and i was like i almost felt like saying did you not watch the first show I was hoping instead of this, we would do some of this. Yeah. You know, we could shorten it instead of lengthen it. So he was like, look over to me at about 20 minutes, and if I start to do this, you no, gotta stretch it out a little. Oh, that's a terrible. <sighs> they, they don't know they're work, working with a guy who's done the stand up four times. At 18 minutes. Yeah. Because I know at 20, I gotta look over to him. I literally start to flop sweat. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, if I have to do a, a minute more than I did in the early show, I don't know what I'm Is fucking the second doing. Is crowd nicer? worse? Wor- they're drunker. Oh yeah. yeah. It's late. It's They're Kinnison's fucked up. crowd. It's Kinnison's crowd. They've been the show second show started late. They've been waiting outside for 45 minutes like mm-hmm. caged animals and they finally got let loose on me. It was a shit show. I ended up doing 30 the second show. Oh my, oh, my god. god. But I will tell you something. And it was Maybe the worst, two worst sets I've ever had in my life for a bunch of reasons. But you know what it did? Very early on, it just showed me I can, whatever happens, it's never going to get worse than that. Yeah, you can handle it. It's never Because the same thing happened that second show. They just stopped paying attention to that I was even there. Do you remember getting paid? I didn't get paid. It was just like a... It was, do you want to open for Sam Kennison? That was it. Zero dollars. Do you remember what you were saying up there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. It was not. It was not great. Hey, hey, did you do crowd work? Like, did you try to? I did one joke about how I had just read about how 
there was a guy who died and his wife still wanted to have, this is true, a news story, his wife still wanted to have babies with the, with the guy. And after he died, told the doctor, how do I still have babies with this guy? And, and the joke was, I mean, that's terrible. Can you imagine being that doctor? Just like, all right. Right? So it was a fake, it was a joke yeah. about a doctor jerking not, off a dead not guy. Bad. Not a bad joke, actually. Not terrible. No, that's right? good. And I, I'm messing up a little bit of the Your setup. But fourth time. Fourth yeah, time, right? Yeah. But that was the closer. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're talking about, which I agree with you, not bad for the no, fourth no, time, no. right? Not terrible, but not a closer. <laughs> and you must have had some, some people have some chuckles in that r- crowd, right? A few. I don't think so. No. I think I had some. I think I. I How think, big was that venue? Well, I think you know, looking back on things, they grow in scope sometimes, and I'm. It's been however many years I was, more than 20 years, I, but had to be rock club in San Antonio, 500 people? Yeah. Seems about right. Wow. But that's, I was- That's it, rough, dude. And, and I will say, that is probably one of the tougher crowds to do, because you're, that guy was a rock yes. star. So you've got that rowdy energy, you've got people high as fuck, drunk as fuck. Kinnison, Kinnison was a screamer and high energy, yeah. so you, that's your audience. That's terrifying. And- I find they're not chill at all. I'm intimidated a little bit by comedy audiences who are standing. Uh, yeah, I hate it. terrible. Oh, you too. Oh, yeah, I, I hate, hate it. I, I would hate to be the audience. They were all standing. I just did a. I did I one like venue that. this year where they said, you know, it's a uh, 300 seats, but we can get in another 150, you know, standing, which means you'll make this much more. <laughs> and I go, I'll take the less money. Yeah, I go. I don't. No, standing. I wouldn't do that to people either. I don't I like go, it. I, I I don't like the show. It's not fun for you, right? And for them, they're uncomfortable. At, yeah, at, at what? standing for an. They're also much more inclined to not watch what's in front of them. If you're standing, you're like, "Hey, what's up?" You you're shifting a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's so stupid. At what point did the two of you start? Because you said I'm doing that because it's not fun for me. Yeah. Right. At what point? Did you start doing that in your career where you were like, you know what? It's important that this is also fun for me. A few years ago. Has it did it change everything for and, you? Yeah, and it's also like it's also an ongoing thing. Like in other words, with like with this this past year, I learned things that I'll apply to next year. Like what? Um, I really don't enjoy going out more than two weekends a month. Me neither. I really don't. Yeah. It's not fun. I, I it starts to just it puts stress on my life, on my home. I don't enjoy it. it, it the fun is not as there. I, and then also the shows become less fun because it's too many shows. You start getting burned out from like, it's not fun to say that bit anymore because I said it 30 times, you know? You know what I find that happens to me when I go out too much? <clears throat> this is, I don't know if. Oh, and no, I'm, I did it this year a few times. No, under any circumstances, Three show Saturdays. No, no, I won't do that either. No, completely. I won't do no that fun. No, and they always get you on the like you'll get the door and yeah, I don't, do that. I don't care. I don't want to do it. You don't even remember what jokes you told. Yeah, and yeah. by the way, that's the whole thing. Like I know it's my job, but I also want it to be enjoyable. Totally. Because if it's enjoyable for you, it's enjoyable for them. That's right. That's they the read, whole thing. They read you having fun. A hundred percent. And I've found the more I go on the road, in particular, which is why I'm making a concerted effort to get on town, go get on stage more in town. I don't know if this is going to come across right, and if I'll articulate it correctly, but I think the more I'm on the road, the worse I of a comic I am. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, because you pick up bad road bad habits. Bad road habits. I've done that. And I start to be, some shows, not that they're not getting a good shows, but artistically, I'm on autopilot. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm not discovering, and I'm not, I'm not, when I'm, what in board isn't the right word either, but when I'm on autopilot, I'm not taking chances. Yeah. Oh, totally. Do you guys find the same thing? Well, 100%. when I first became a headliner, and especially as a woman, I felt that pressure of like, I gotta fucking kill it, dude. Like I'm headlining the improvs. I'm one of maybe four women yeah. they let do that. So I better kill this shit. And I found myself like just working on killing more than being creative and coming up with those bits that are gonna make your I career, did that the you know? whole this whole past year. I did that exact thing. And I didn't, honestly, it was a conversation with Rogan last night at the comedy store. Last night? Last night. He said something to me and it just was like a, I was like, oh my God, that's why. He always does that. Yeah. That's the that's fucking, fucking the why. Guru. What was it? Yeah. Well, actually, he mentioned something that you said. 
Oh, okay. he was like, he said, he said, Tommy <laughs> talked about, you know, don't do those dance moves on stage. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the dance moves are things that I do on the road because I know, look, I don't. And when I say dance moves, I don't want people to think that they're getting cheated. No, they're still they're enjoying the dance moves. Yeah, a lot. Of course, they really are. Dance moves kill. They it's just kill. Your, it's your go to though. Yeah. But that's the thing. When you, it, it's it's more. It's less about cheating the audience. I'm not cheating them. They're having a good time. It's more about cheating myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I'm relying on something that I know is gonna work, but I'm not you challenging. Have a bad feeling about it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, exactly. You can say it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're dirty. Your eyes are down. You're like, <laughs> You d- yeah, yeah, you know, there's like a, there's a part in one story that I know if I make this face with this move, yeah. yeah. But I'd rather just the words. But I sometimes know. I'm like, but the face and the move, they love the face but and the move. I heard, uh, uh, I think Jim Norton used the expression uh, "muscling a joke." Like yeah, when like when you can get a laugh because of the way you, you know, there's a certain way you can say it or make a move, basically aggressively get the laugh. But it's not, it's not funny. Standalone, like you just saying it. Like there's certain bits, you know, like certain lines. You just but, say it, and it's like boom. Yeah, but like, here's the thing: is there anything wrong with enhancing the bit? Because I no. brought this up with my shrink no. once, because I was like, I feel like a fraud if I'm doing something a little, ah, you know. And she's like, Yeah, but you're you're doing your job. But it feels hacky to you. Maybe it feels cheaper to you. But that's our I think job. You, I th- no, there's nothing wrong with it. And here's the thing: it's all about how you feel about any there one you of those go. things. See, Maybe that's and, it's, it. and it doesn't matter if the highest level comedian tells you it's okay to feel this way. You, you should feel this. Way. If you feel a certain way about a line or an expression or something in your act, and you just it doesn't sit well with you, that's the only instinct you should trust. Do you know what yeah. I I found? And in, and in, and in, in, in after talking to Joe last night. And because I did not sleep a lot last night, just thinking. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, dude. Because oh, I found myself, as I analyzed my last year on the road, trapped between what I know that I do well on stage mm-hmm. and who I want to be on stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Does that make sense? 100%. Okay, so here's what I know I do well on stage. I'm Look, I, I tell people at the beginning of every one of my shows, man, I hope you didn't come here to learn anything. Yeah. Like, this is that's not this show. <laughs> yeah. like, do you know what I mean? Like, I this like is, that a lot. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> Just turn your brain off. Like, we're not talking politics. I tell stupid stories. Like, that's how it goes. Yeah. But part of me, when I watch Rogan and Burr, I'm like, oh, that's how I want to deliver it. Huh. But you know, you mentioned something about, there's been something I've always wanted to do on stage, but just because we have such a tiny community about how you're judged, I've just never done it. But my live shows have ex- exploded, it's not the right word, but... It's been a great thing for my live shows. I, I love and have always loved, what I loved about Sandra a lot, I love those stupid fucking songs he sang. Mm-hmm. Because they were fun. They were a lot of fun. And so my thing in the last couple of years on stage has always been like, hey, you're not going to learn anything. This show is just about having fun. Like, I want you to leave here like you had a good time. And that's my concern. But it's okay being that guy. It took me up until two years ago to be to feel that. Because oh. I was so concerned, you know, you With want making you want respect impact. from yeah. your your peers. peers. I worry about you that want too. Respect from your peers, I'm, you I'm know, hundred percent with you. Ugh. I'm hundred percent with you because yeah. also the the comics that are celebrated and talked about the most is because they provide like some insight. Yes, right. But those are the ones that the press celebrates and the press uh, publicizes. Oh, the insight. From, you know, like, Louis was very insightful. Right. You know, I say was because he died, but. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but, Rest you know in I mean? peace. Like, uh, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, that be level is like that higher, that high level. But then I started, because I would have the same insecurity. Like, oh, you know, like, I have shows and I have fun at the show and I feel like the audience is laughing. But, like, I'll never be regarded as high level because I don't provide... I don't have like some great intellectual insight where they go, oh, I never thought of it that way. And like the, the way you do like hear a, a new, like a burr bit where you're like, oh my God, the way he breaks that thing down. Yeah. So I would feel like really shitty about that. But then I would think about, okay, so he's like that, like Patton's like that. I'm like, oh, those guys are just, you know, it's another level. They're just so much better and so much smarter. But then I started to think about other comics who were really highly celebrated 
who it was just they're just so funny. And then like the first one who I fell in love with would stand out to me, which was Eddie Murphy. Mm-hmm. Like nobody talked about how Eddie Murphy viewed this thing from such a crazy, insightful angle. They were just like, he's the funniest fucking guy. And I'm not saying like, you know, so he'd be Eddie Murphy, but my thing was that I would feel better about myself thinking that like that dude's show was just about being funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin Hart's another one. There couldn't, there can't be a bigger, more famous comedian on the planet. It's not because he's just extrapolating this one idea. It's because he's himself. He has a lot of fun up there, and he's just a naturally funny dude, right? You know. So I would always think about those dudes when I would feel badly about not being the other guy. You know? Yeah. And, and like, and I, it's. It it sucks if you because you start comparing your it's natural you go like well I'm, but I'm not these five guys you know yeah but then you realize that like you don't have to be those five guys those guys are who they are um, that's that's what they bring to stand up but there's great examples of people who are just funny having fun who are essentially saying don't come here to learn shit dude uh, I, you know, know I toured with Cable Guy for four years oh. yeah no one's learning shit at that show no no but I will tell you something They're having a lot of fun. So, my brothers, you know, we're all Northeastern Jews. Yeah. My brothers are all like, well, I'm not going to laugh at that show. I'm like, come to the show. Yeah. He, do you know, and, and it used to kill me when people would badmouth him. Do you know? I know. That we, I loved him, actually. He, and such a nice guy. And do you know, we counted one night, 372 punchlines in his act. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Bang, right? bang, bang. 372. It's just joke, 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 joke. Yeah. And it's an hour and a half. And so my brother was like, I'm not going to laugh. I go, let me tell you something. You may not laugh at 100. There's 272 yeah. other punchlines. Yeah. yeah. It's t- Everybody laughs at something. Sure. And then when I was wrestling with the whole guitar thing, because I have fun, he's the one who finally was like, hey, man, you seen my act? And I go, yeah. He goes, what do I do at the end of the act? I go, you bring out the guitar. He goes, how many tickets do I sell? And I was like, and he yeah. said, your job. Your only job is to entertain the people sitting in front of you. You can't entertain Bill Burr's crowd or Joe Rogan's crowd. That's not your crowd. Right. Don't worry about their crowd. Worry about your crowd. Yeah. And that was the thing where I was like, and my crowd loves lighthearted. I'm not saying they don't, and I don't work at my craft. I work very hard at my craft. Sure. But And that's the thing that I think I get caught at where I felt like, well, maybe I'm not providing the same amount of entertainment because they're not learning anything or they're not. But, which is not true. Which is not true. It's not true. Because well, Mike Myers, Adam Sandler, those movies. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's not Who Schindler's cares? List, which no. was no. not that funny, but right. But I think it's the like it's the funny. shoulds. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the shoulds where you go, like, I should be this guy. Yeah. I should want to be like the people I admired. But do you and feel the same thing? Yeah, yeah. For years you go, I should be more like this person. I should be. And that's the shoulds that get you in trouble creatively until you just relax and go like, Yeah, but who am I? What do I like? That's another thing I have to oh, do. Oh, I like this. Exactly. I like you know what I like? I I like farts, but I also like to talk about X, Y, and Z. I like this and that, and then fuck all the rest, you know? You're good at a couple things. At, at but only a couple things. <laughs> just, just, no, no. Just thanks, there's, there's two things you're good thanks, at. Thanks, Josh. So, no. Thanks, buddy. You're really good at identifying and staying true to, like, you're like, but I, you know you're lame. But that's because I've done so many other mistakes, like wearing a white dress and doing naughty and sort of nice. That literally was so far out of my lane for so many years learning to feature and having to dance like a monkey and just get rebooked because I wanted to be a comedian so badly that I made all the mistakes. I was a hack. I was a fucking racist. I was a, you know what I mean? Like telling the jokes in my mind. I cringe looking back at the... The stuff I did just to survive. Yeah. What's the, it, your most cringeworthy joke you can ah, remember? I, I mean, oh, do I, don't, I can't yours? even do it. On deck? You know, uh, do you have anything I'm that sure. you can think of you were like, oh, I can't believe I used to tell this joke? I think my Whoa. husband's balls. I was talking about your nuts or something stupid like I that. I just remember like that my, like I, it's so embarrassing to, people don't realize this, but like most comics, you think about like the first thing you put out. I'm like, I'm not, I, I'm not totally ashamed of it, but like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into those jokes. No. That's why like it's, it's upsetting to me like. I put out my first album in 2010, which means it was basically what had been built for 10 years mm-hmm. up to then. Um, and it was definitely what I was touring with all of 2009 and most of eight. And it's like, you know, I when those things come on, I'm like, oh, God, like, turn that. Somebody's got to turn that off. But then, like, my dad will be like, you know what I love? And he <laughs> loves that first album. And he'll mention, I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't know how to tell you this. 
I'm not proud of that. Like I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. If you had to rewrite those <laughs> jokes, yeah, would they be completely different? If you I, went back in with your with, with you with, like jokes yeah. from five years ago yeah. for you, yeah, it's if you're rewriting them, would you go back in and would they be completely different? Yeah, I think I think without a doubt they would. I mean, I've, I've never yeah. even really considered that idea, but I think without a doubt because. I thought it would be always fascinating for somebody who's super accomplished, who's put out five or six or seven albums or however many hours, to go back to that first hour as a comedian and go, okay, if I was going to rework this album, yeah, how, what would I do? Because I, I because Ugh. because your your point of view it's so embarrassing it has got to be completely different. It's now totally than it was. different. It's a totally different point of view. It's also a totally different approach to stand up. See, some people. I think the reason my dad. And people like him would like that first album is it's basically a feature acts, you know, I mean, I'm headlining for a couple of years at that point, mm -hmm. but it's all the bits you develop. It's like your whole my whole goal was to kill. Mm -hmm. And like there are a lot of laughs, but it's not I'm not being myself on the album. I'm like just a joke writer. You know what I mean? Like I'm just like going I know exactly. For it. But what that you mean. takes time to meld who yes. you are because you Those, also are younger as right. a person. And if then, there's a process and then between then yeah. and now, right? Like now, I'm much more. the The version of who I am on stage is so much truer to who I am now mm -hmm. than back then. It was like that's a writer performer who's just. I'll talk about. I'll say this joke because I know I can get a laugh out of that. You know what I mean? Like it's not. There's like there's very little me. Yeah. In the... You know what's interesting? You both have mentioned uh, getting on stage or performing just to kill. Yeah. And so I just filmed a, a special in Boise, right? Congratulations. Oh. Thank you. Um, what's it called? Uh, Northeastern Jew Boy. What's I hope that's what I was going for, but yeah. they're not they're for not whatever reason. That's stupid. Yeah, I tried Kike Central. <laughs> oh, that's a good then, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in South Carolina once, but I got off stage once. That's and great. Meet and greet line, and some dude was like, "Hey, man," and he thought he was being funny. He was like, "I don't normally think you people are funny," and I was like, <gasps> "And I go, you people?" And this is exactly what he said. He goes, "You know," and he winks, kites, and oh, I go, "My life, kites with a T." Like, is that kind of where, <laughs> what? Where uh, was this? Yeah, it was in South Carolina in Myrtle Beach at a, at a, the comedy club on the boardwalk there. And the, by the way, I, I love that he doesn't see any irony. And I don't think you people probably the most prolific stand up comedians of all time. Yeah, <laughs> and, invented yeah. it, didn't yeah. they? And Jews, yeah. not Vaudeville. a lot of kite flyers. Like yeah. we're not out in the parks flying yeah. kites. And you're not that Jewy. No, I would no. never have pegged you as Jewy. Thank Jew you. I'm gonna yeah. take that as a compliment. Yeah, um, it's kind of a backhanded compliment. It really is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Well, he's not as Jewy as Ari. Like no, you Ari, Ari is like oh. Jewy. Yeah. Ari's That's what I'm offensively saying. Jewy. Yeah, Ari, Ari I like can, Avi Lieberman. I can understand yeah. somebody not liking. Jewish people, if they meet art. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like, uh, I did not mean it by that. And he has a st no. like oh, if you drew a meant. cartoon Jew, yeah, that's, that's what, what Ari would, that yeah. you'd look like Ari. Yeah, he's, I agree. Yeah. He's and an exemplary that, Jew. Like, yeah, I don't like those people. No, why yeah, would you? Yeah. There's nothing. It's not. That's what, that's it's what Christina not was likeable. saying. Yeah. yeah, guys, come on. Totally get that. As in general, Jews are just. Well, yeah. I had somebody yeah. online. I'm having such a good time. Anti Semites are so funny to mess with online. I love trolling the trolls. Yeah. But this one dude was just going in on me about how Jews aren't white. And I was like, what? I don't know. But I was like, but Jew, it's not a. Are Jews, Jews are white. Well, it's a yeah. religion. Yeah. It's a religion. Yeah, it's not an ethnicity. Um, was it? Oh, here's what I, I did want to ask you about. So the special, the, the, the yeah, killing yeah, part, yeah. right? Yeah. So this hour of material, mm -hmm. this special, I tried to do something different. I start. With one story, and I end with the same story. It's basically one long story. Jesus. Now, I go in and out with some tangents. Yeah. But it's a story about how my son challenged me to a fight. And that how in every young man's you life. you told me this. Right? And how yeah. every young man's life, you know, you look at your dad at least one time, and you think, oh, I could beat the shit out of this dude. Yeah. Right? At yeah. least one time. Really? Oh, you you Dads think about so it. Weird. The test Now, you may not do it, but you fantasize about beating the fuck out of your dad at least once wow. right yeah 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 there's de there's definitely a moment in there where you're like and i remember yeah, yeah, yeah i can remember being like i think i'm stronger than this yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i think i could take him i think yeah. that's a freudian phase it's normal it, yeah. it really is yeah. but so this hour it's interesting if you were said hey give me your your funniest hour of material that's not what this special would be right but i think this is my best special but it's okay, great. it's interesting that you say that because i think People 
listening or who I you know follow stamps to go go wait a minute like you don't want to kill isn't that like the whole purpose and it's like it can still kill and still be really funny when you're not it sounds weird to say when you're not going for killing mm -hmm. in other words that can be some of the funniest shit but when it's when it's funny and it's true to who you are i don't know it's it's funnier it's better i wanted i wa first i wanted to do something because i love telling stories that's my yeah. right and i love telling long stories and i used to be really scared of the silence of and, course and then till somebody said hey that means they're listening dude yeah that means they're listening they're really listening they're listening but so this special if for me is super scary because it's incredibly personal yeah it's yeah, incredibly that's, that's good then. personal and so i've gone back and like Recently, I'm going back and forth with the editor, and I'm like, are those first 12 minutes funny enough? And he keeps, he's like, they're not as funny as the last 48, but he keeps saying, you're telling a story. This is yeah. one long story. Think of it as a script. The first a act has to set up the story. 60-minute story? That's it's crazy. It goes in and out, right? Yeah, right. right to, 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 to justify some things that I do and that he does, but yeah, it's... it's I love that, man. That's exciting. I mean, I, that's very cool. Do we have a name for it yet? Well, it's one of two. Be, it's either Josh Wolf Father of the Year mm -hmm. or Josh Wolf Family First, and I can't decide which one. <laughs> I wanted Family Matters, but I understand there was a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that they that was not open. Uh, but yeah, and I shot it myself, paid for it myself. Wow. Nice. Um, you found a home for it yet? Are you shopping it? I'm, I'm oh, going to be shopping it at the beginning yeah. of January. Good but for you, man. I don't know. Like That's a part of the business that I don't know anything about, and I don't. I don't know if there's a bad place for it to live, but I'm excited for people to see it. That's great. That's I really, really am cool. excited for people to see it. That's very exciting. Um, yeah, another thing I was going to say that you're really good at is- Oh, I'm so excited to talk no, about me again. Yeah, talk about you is, um, you know, you're really good at sharing the personal and making it funny. Oh, So you, you take like real, the real things that are really going on, and I see you hone and craft and work out. So like your special- is fantastic. Yeah. Thanks. Tom. And no, no, but like, see, I I'll feel insecurities <laughs> about that. So like, because I'll go like, I don't do, I don't have the same approach. Yeah. So then I'll feel like, oh that that like it, the same thing we were talking about, like, oh that sucks. I'm not doing, and I have to I have to get my my headspace out of like, don't try to, don't try to do what Josh is doing. Don't try to do what Christina's doing. Don't get distracted by. Let them do what they do well. And and I have to tell myself like, just try to do what you do and try to do that well. You what know? do you feel like you would say for both of you, is your biggest strength as a comic and your biggest weakness? Oh boy, dude. I I know what my I feel like my biggest weakness is is uh, I, uh, is the theatrics of it. Like I because I I when I'm not confident, I get a little instead of going back to my craft. I just I get bigger, and I think it's the complete wrong way. That's you get bigger normal. as a performer. I get bigger as a yeah. performer, yeah. and I'm ruining my own. I'm, I'm taking away the work part of it, and I go for the easy. Instead, and by the way, I don't think there's a problem with getting bigger, but as long as you've already done your work, right? Because it can enhance the joke, but yeah. not making it the joke. And my weakness is to sometimes I take the easy and I go for that. I go way too easy. And I think that you, like you said, it's from the road. Yeah, but sometimes easy for what's easy sometimes is your first inclination. Yes. But for the viewers, it's not theirs. It feels easy to you that's because true. that's your point of view, actually. But 99% huh. of the population won't true. go to that thought because your brain's fucked up because you're a comedian. Yeah. And it often and the think jokes that's that have. easy joke. And it's, and it's like, not. Because yeah. often the easiest jokes I've had, people are like, you're so fucked up that you think that way. I'm like, really? Because it <laughs> feels really normal to me. Yeah. <laughs> and that those are the most celebrated sometimes things. That yeah, that, just feel no natural that to throw me. Throwaway line. Yeah, you weren't gonna say it, and then they're like, "That's the signature." Bit that of yeah. This hour, Joe you know? Rogan saw one of my bits where I tell people they're not <laughs> worth it, yeah, and it's yeah. in my trailer. Yeah. And I almost didn't put it in my special until he. I love that line, and I go, "That was just a throwaway." I yeah. thought everybody thought that way. Yeah, that's so crazy. Isn't so, that crazy? Uh, you just kind of under your breath something on stage one night, and it's like, hundred <laughs> percent. You know, what thing. did I just? Because do? that's the real you. That's the real. And that's yeah. what resonates. All I think is the real thought, not the not the ego societal filtered 
that's why Kinison was so great because he would sh- he would say what's in the the id right the unfiltered societal right. that fucking bitch I fucking hate her and people were like yeah I hate my wife too fucking bitch <laughs> yeah. it's that primal it's what stuff. I love about you know I started like I said I started with Joey Diaz right yeah and Joey used to bomb. Bomb. Like, like, I've heard of this. Heavily bomb. He's so ce- okay. He's so celebrated, particularly by our circle yeah. of like fans and friends. <laughs> yeah, and like he's so <laughs> naturally funny. What? And you know, I see him go on stage, and like the the craziest thing about it, he's one of these. If you give him twenty minutes, you better back away from like be like do like when I did a, a show with him one time, he's like, "How you want it to go?" I was like. You're going last. Yeah. And he was like, yeah. he was like all right. Yeah. I was like, dude, no. Like, I have, I want no part of this. No. So let me go up there, stand still like I do, <laughs> kind of <laughs> slow burn my way through my set, and then you go up there with your flamethrower and do whatever you want to do. And he was like, all right, all right. Like, like, it's so crazy. But like, so that's where he is now. What, like, what was his, like, what was he talking about? Okay. What was his act like? Okay. Well, first... I agree with you 100%. I've always said I would rather follow an hour of Joey Diaz than 15 minutes of Joey Diaz. Yeah, oh, yeah, my yeah. goodness. Because if he's firing on all cylinders that 15 minutes, it's problematic. over. Yeah, yeah. But you go back. I was going to say his anger is what few – like that Kinderson thing, people relate when he yes. dips into that. Yeah, especially if he's anger, angry about something trivial. <laughs> These fucking peanuts. Yeah, yeah. You got to fight. We, nobody can eat peanuts anymore. Yeah. And he goes crazy. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he used to go on stage and just tell jokes. I mean, jokes. He, he closed his set. He would kill me if I told anybody this. But he used to close his set on a street joke about, you know, something about a French guy – Jizzing on some curtains, something like that. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, it was yeah. some. But he would bomb until oh. three or four minutes into his act when nobody was laughing, and he would get mad, there and then go. he would crush. That was him. Because really? that's then who he is. He, his jokes were terrible. But he would be so. But as soon up. as he turned on this one night, it was so funny. And you know what's crazy about him? If you on paper, if you looked at him, you're like, this dude how, is. Everybody gets offended, right? Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. I've, I've said that all the time. He says crazy stuff. Nobody. Yeah. And it's fantastic. Nobody. Because yeah. he's Uncle Joey. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's his truth. I think that goes back to what yeah. you said. People accept it. And, because and it's also, not hateful, too. Yeah, so no, there's, no, there's, no, uh, no. Uh, no. Audience no realizes, like, when he talks about racial stuff, <laughs> and it's, like, coming out of him, <laughs> fucking they... Momo. Yeah. <laughs> That's a Momo. Yeah. I'm not even sure I know what a yeah. Momo they is. They somehow put together, they're like... They know that's how this guy talks. Mm-hmm. They know it's not like like he actually would be like a defense that somebody else can't use. Like that's how I talk. They'd be like, "That's fucked up that you say that." Like for him, without explaining it, they go, "Oh, that's just how." Like they they buy into that's yeah. his vernacular. That's his. Just throw it on the couch or something, babe. No, I I, I, case Claudia. I heard him one night. There was two Asian women right up front. Yeah, and we're just we're here. It might have been at the Ha Ha. And he goes, how are you folks doing? Oh, look at Gina. He goes like this, Gina. And then he goes, look at you two. You're hot. You make me want to go home and play Karate Kid with myself. <laughs> it doesn't even make any sense. Yeah. But it, you know what it I mean? Does, but it does. <laughs> but it does. Emotionally, yeah. you go, yeah. And they're I, laughing. Yeah. They're, they're, it's, I mean, it's in, I've never understood. Nobody gets offended by Joe Diaz. Somebody also pointed out, and I believe this is true too, that like audiences sense intent. Yes. You don't have to go like, I mean it to be taken this way. Yeah. Like yeah. they know when you're hateful. Yeah. Or when you're like just, you know, you're you just mean it like in a friendly way. They That's why the know. Twitter jokes don't work because you can't tell tone. No. Yeah. But on stage, I've always said that is that at the end of the day, it's not the word, it's intent. Yeah. Yeah. It's the intent with the word that really bothers me. That's people. why I fucking hate Twitter. I just I don't I don't because you're you're missing so much context, and then people jump all over you. It's a big fucking dog shit pile. I, I, it's just an excuse for people to be hateful. I it's not even fun. No, it used to be fun. I don't know. It used to be kind of fun, and it. now it's like uh, uh, no fun at all because you can't even tell a joke mm, without are. somebody just to PC. Everybody's yeah, all I fucking. Agree with you. Everyone's fired up about Trump, and it's all misdirected energy. <laughs> I think. 
Oh, you got a dental update? I do. Hey, man, I got to remind you because you told me something fantastic. I'll save it. It's the update. This is time for a dental update, Josh Wolf. First of all, you have a beautiful smile. We Thank all you. all noticed. Yeah. Um, do you take care of your teeth? I try to. Yeah? Uh, I have to admit that I am not the most regular flosser, but oh. I try to remember. Well, okay. I did chip four of my lower teeth two weeks ago. Oh, my goodness. We have chip one of those. four? So we have one of those arrowhead things, water things. Yeah. And I, w- I was a m- maybe a little high. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, uh, it was like I couldn't get the empty one off. Yeah. So I pulled super hard and I just hit myself in the th- oh. right in the face. Oh. Really? <laughs> yeah. Damn. And then I could ta- I could feel the powder, the teeth pow- tooth powder <gasps> in my what mouth. And I was wow. like, wow. oh, no, 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 no. You ever chipped a tooth? Uh, yes. Yeah. So you know the first thing you're dreading is that mirror because you're like, how yeah. bad <laughs> am I going to look? Like because a chip tooth can dramatically change who you are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. For years. A, a chip tooth, like one bad chip tooth, you're like, yeah, that it goes from oh, that this dude is like a successful. My favorite people <laughs> are the ones who let a chip yeah. tooth just go uh, uh, or a missing tooth for life. They're just like I chipped this tooth when I was 11, and you're like, you're 48. <laughs> Yeah. You, you have five hundred dollars. <laughs> you can fix that, dude. Have you not been to a dentist What's since you were eleven? Yeah. Like, yeah. But I mean, that is seems like a weird thing not to fix. A hundred percent, man. That's how this segment basically started. It was just telling people to fucking put off <laughs> an iPhone, put off a trip to Orlando. Just get your fucking tooth fixed. Change yeah. your whole face, bro. Yeah. It changes everything. It's like you said. You look at someone, you're like, that guy's got it together. You see that missing tooth, and you're like, <laughs> that guy's got all kinds yeah. of problems. Or the yeah. brown tooth. You're like, yeah. Stop yeah. One brown. brown tooth. One brown dead tooth. Uh, by the way, like, yeah, just how about you just, you don't need unlimited data like, this month. I mean, just go get a tooth. Oh, and here's the thing. It is, w- there's some things in life, it is worth, worth getting some debt on. It's like, someone's like, oh, you know, I, I try not to live debt free. Take a take a take a couple grand in debt mm-hmm. to have all this and like just pay pay your shit get focused. Put I it on plastic, dude. Credit, care, you know. credit, dental yeah. credit. They have programs, bro. And, yeah, because there's other things that it's going to open up your whole your whole world to things like apples. Yeah, celery. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Yes. Like yeah. a tough garlic bread. You know, something yeah. like that. You have to chew on a yeah. little bit. Oh, Crackers, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> gum. <laughs> Anything where you're like, my dad. So my dad's teeth are. Fucked. But they've always been <laughs> fucked. My dad's got dad breath. Yeah, my dad too, but that's because his teeth are like yeah. fucked. But mm. you always, you can tell he chooses gum right up front no. because he uh, can't chew them on the side. No. I hate, I'm like, no. I hate watching you chew gum, dude, because it's like, you, you know what I mean? He chews them in his front teeth. He chews <laughs> I've never seen someone chew them. Because it's all up front because the back molars and stuff, he, they no. are painful. I'm like, let me just help dude, you out, man. Yeah, go, go, go. Let's go get, yeah, the front tooth chew gum guy is not. You can't do that. That's a bad Maybe look. our next charity will be to take someone like that. We did a charity That's a good idea. toy uh, thing this, this so holiday. Wait. Yeah, and we, you know, we sold some uh, merch and uh, raised a bunch of money and then... We went shopping, bought tons of toys, and to, uh, donated to Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. That's awesome. Yeah, that was great. And there's a vlog of it. If uh, I mentioned it before, but if you go to our our YouTube um, page, uh, Your Mom's House Podcast YouTube page, which just passed 100,000 subscribers. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Um, there is a vlog of us you know, buying and donating those vlog toys. Of you. But now I feel like we should maybe do a tooth one. Yeah, we can uh, pick people. In the audience. Can I uh, throw some? Uh, now, we do the same thing. We uh, we went down to a church in Southgate. And this dude took over this church in this little area that's it's like a little pocket that is luckily free from gangs because the Mongol bicycle, m- not bicycle, motorcycle yeah. <laughs> gang. <laughs> probably shouldn't call them a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have like a motorcycle shop on that street so the gangs don't come in there. But this dude... We went down and donated this mother of five daughters, single mom, hadn't had a working refrigerator in six months. <gasps> oh, jeez. Oh, no. She told me that she kept her refrigerator in the backyard because it kept the co- the food cooler in the backyard than oh, it did in the house. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so we terrible. provided like some shit, but yeah. they have a little, this church next door. They all have a property. They have this great property. And the guy was like, we want this to be boys and girls clubs for this area. 
but for the arts, because the schools down there don't have an arts program. So he's trying to make that place next to the church be like Boys and Girls Club, but instead of geared towards sports, geared towards the arts. Yeah. And it's that's our next thing. We that's really want to awesome. cool. I think so, because he was like, in these neighborhoods, well, especially actually, in the hood. I just realized, uh, we have our thing. We're going to do it for your dad. Where yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where does your dad live? <laughs> we'll go to Maine. Yeah. Us and Bob Marley will do a benefit for... Uh... Dude, this is be a fucking awesome... <laughs> Awesome video. <laughs> it kind of would be a good it would video. Be. If we do a pre-show one where we're like, do you want to do this? And he's like, no. My dad, yeah, he'd be that's exactly <laughs> And we're like, we raised all his money. Yeah, man. he'd be like, like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm pretty good the way what it if is. they pass you, you'll be passed out. We'll give you from gas and then you just wake up with no pain. No, that's no, not. I like chewing gum in my fucking <laughs> Well, because you do get, you adapt to yeah. whatever wackiness is happening in your mouth. Like yeah. I had a bad, um, a bad root canal or whatever, a, a cap. So for years I would just chew on the other side or chew around mm-hmm. it. Like 10 years that way until I finally changed it. I'm like, oh, I didn't need to live like that. But Tommy, your yeah. dental update I wanted you to t- talk about in Hawaii. You said that you floss if you don't have dental floss with business cards. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the reasons I take business cards or... Um, you know when you park and you park in a uh, yes. a lot yeah. and they have like a, that ticket <laughs> yeah. comes out. I'll keep those in my wallet. And what happens is if you're huh. if you're somewhere, let's say you're at dinner and you you're in a restaurant and you're like shit, like and it's like bothering you. You have something you don't have floss usually steak. On you. I get steak mm-hmm. caught yeah. there. I'll go to the bathroom, pull out my wallet, right, and I'll be like, okay, I'll just go through my wallet. What's, what's here? <laughs> ah, here you go. And then that thing that's here. I just stick it right through. So it's clearly not a germaphobe at all. No. 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 Okay, yeah, yeah. because yeah. that dude literally could have wiped his ass and been like, oh, I forgot to give Tom a yeah, business yeah. card. No, I got it. I'll, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll take his shit in my mouth. I mean, I, just, so anybody who is going to give Tom a business card in the future, just know yeah. the practical yeah. jokes. Yeah. yeah. Wipe your balls yeah, with yeah, your yeah, It won't matter. It's going in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it really works. And I'm telling you, when you're in that, it, you know, sometimes it's a little thing and it just makes you freaked like it, it, it's yeah. making you yeah. crazy and i'm like i can't get this out of it from between my teeth where i don't know you're like i said you're at a restaurant and i, I just got to do something can i offer an idea that may sound crazy straws mm. but isn't it just as easy to <laughs> to carry a little floss well i think about I mean, that, that too that, but, but like how many I times tried. am i, I gonna forget. i mean i'll forget in other words like it's not you're right i could put a floss thing in there and the other thing you can do is flatten a straw like if you take a straw, you oh, keep biting yeah. it, I've biting it, that. biting it, so it starts to come together, and you can shove that between your teeth sometimes. That's but I've dangerous. I've cut my gums doing that. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> you have? Oh, yeah. Now, another thing I've done in a pinch is if I'm wearing tube socks, I'll pull a string out of the tube sock. What? Wow. Yeah. That'll often work. That too. is advanced shit right you there. Got it. You got it. That Because that's got some elasticity to it, yeah. too, also. It works. It works. I mean, only in a pinch, though. I don't do it every day. Uh, it's ingenious. It really uh, is. It's pretty smart. Pretty smart. Uh, but you have good teeth, man. <laughs> I appreciate yeah. it, man. Yeah, we really do talk about teeth a lot. Your so. son has good teeth? Yeah, he does. He, we're very lucky. How old is he? Two. two. He just turned two. Now, have you hit, because I my kids are obviously old. Have you hit that point? What point, what age was he when you looked at him and you were like, I don't know what I'm doing? Oh, all, all times when he came out of me. <laughs> all the times, right? Where you're like, I don't have any idea. I have anxiety and I, I, I can't do this all the time. I'm like, I don't, he hates me. I don't the, he the, hates the first me. time Doesn't I thought me. I didn't know what I was doing, he was a baby. He was in the back seat. He was in, in his car seat. And I got out of the minivan and I walked him back and I looked at him and I was like, you got shit on your neck, buddy? Like, why do you have shit on your neck? And then, you know when it, they poop up? Yeah. Mm. And I called my mom. I'm like, they poop up? She was like, yeah, it's really weird. I'm like, yeah, but he was sitting up straight. Yeah. And, and the poop, poop shot up, up his yeah. back? Yeah. And she was oh, like, yeah. yeah. The she was like, poop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the back. She said, just so you know, like, I go, I don't know how that happens. She goes, it's not going to be the first time you're confused. <laughs> just let it just let it go. Let it there's ride. some long days where I'm like, whoa. You know what I mean? Like, there's been days where <laughs> Christina's gone. She's out of town doing a gig. Nanny's day off. And we'll start off. And it's like, especially because, you know, people don't realize it with adults. But with kids, it's so evident about the beginning of the day mood. Like, he can wake up and you're like, this is a fucking angel. Like, he's just like, <laughs> like giggling. Yeah. It's just all fun. But a kid wakes up in a bad mood at that age, like at 18 months, and like when when uh, when there's whining and crying, and you're like, well, maybe you're hungry. Oh, you're not. Maybe you want to be changed. Oh, you don't. 
maybe you want this toy or something. You don't, and then like nothing satisfies the wine. Dude, that you know, six hours into that, I'm like, I don't fucking know what to do. Yeah, it's yeah. it's so. Can you please take a nap? Please? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and that nap time comes around, and it's it, victory. It yeah, it's like, can't last long enough. Nap time is so good. You know what the most frustrating thing is? You're like, why won't you take a nap? And then you're like, well, shit, I got to go out to the store, and you put them in the car, yeah, and they fall asleep for the no. ten minutes in the car ride. Yeah. And you're like, why couldn't you fall asleep at the house? No, of course not. They just fall, they wait, and they fall asleep in the car. We did an hour drive to a hotel. <laughs> oh, my God. To, uh, and we were trying to figure out when should we <sighs> leave. It's like, well, it's going to have breakfast. It's going to have this morning time. You know, check in the hotels like three. Should we wait? Should we put him down for his nap at one, get up, and then be down there at like five or six? And like everybody, we knew, all our friends were like, dude, leave during that time. He'll nap. No, just, he'll sleep in the car. He'll sleep on the way down. It's perfect. Yeah. We were like, all right, we don't. We just don't normally do. We don't do that. Yeah. Okay. He fucking <laughs> cried from the second we left here. <laughs> it's horrible. Until the second we pulled in, just and it was like a ninety minute. It was it's traffic. So horrible. And like, like one like, of those scream cries, yeah, screaming for so ninety sad. minutes straight, and we just pulled up and we we're like, "Is the room ready?" And they're like, "Ah, I think so." They're like, "Is there a crib in there?" We can get one. I'm like, do it fucking now. <laughs> and I mean, like that first day was us unwinding. It's a that mental drive. beating. That yeah. screaming in your oh ear is God. such a mental. It is a mental beating. It breaks you. Down. I remember. I, it, honestly, it, it really does break you. It when does. He was a baby, yeah. You used to be able to. Uh, you could hold him and go. You do a louder shush into his ear, and he would. It would soothe him. So like, baby is here. Yeah. He's crying. You go shh, shh, and like that sound would soothe him. But there was times when it wouldn't do it, and I would catch myself just going. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like looking at me like you fucking psycho. And he's like, ah. and I just, you know, I would lose. I would yeah. just like fucking not slipping know what in to a do. motherfucker yeah. in there. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I think the crying for me is the hardest. I don't give a shit about poopy diapers or yeah. any of that that stuff doesn't wear me down as much as cr as the, the hard crying crying tears. because it makes you feel bad it makes me feel like yeah like i'm doing something wrong i've done something wrong why is he crying right or just the sound That's of so it i don't like the shrill you. you're like i've done something wrong yeah it's it, i talk about it in therapy a lot <laughs> 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 no it's it's an issue with me and my shrink but i know i'm working on it but um but i go to i get panicky because i'm i get afraid that it's never going to end uh, what if I can't figure out what's wrong? Like, even though rationally I know, I yeah. know the, the checks, the boxes, just like I'm afraid of things getting out of control for some reason. You know what's funny is, and I think only because of circumstance, I honestly never felt that because when my kids were young, I was single and there was three of them. And so things, worrying about things like that, I there was too many. Uh, do you know what I mean? Yes. That was a that was not that I wouldn't have if I yeah. I just didn't have the time. It wasn't even in to there. think about yeah. why is that me? That makes sense though. There was no yeah. time that that there wasn't time for that instinct, which I'm sure would have kicked in oh my to kick in because when he was crying, there were two other kids, so yeah. I couldn't let that. It's so what do you do when there's two other and one and then how do you decide who gets what attention? Like my thing is like if we have another kid, like what if they're both crying at the same time? Like who, what do you who do you deal with first or what, what do you do? What you learn is that there's crying and then there's crying. Yeah, we know that right. one, right? So <laughs> and your cry is not significant. The fake cry. So shut the fuck yeah, up. Right? Yeah, right. Like so, I know that cry. Yeah, that cry can be cured with. Yeah, a, a Capri Sun. Right, right. So I am not <laughs> going to address that crying. Yeah. This crying here, which seems to involve blood, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and look at this cry. Because we pick up on that yeah, cry Yeah, we now. know the fake like, cries. We're like, that's not real. He's <laughs> like, he's like Yeah. When they cry and then look at you out of the <laughs> yeah. side of their eye, like, is this working? Yeah, then you're yeah. like, nah, dude, yeah. I'm not falling for yeah. that shit. And also what I found <laughs> is that sometimes so true. the cry, when they cry it out themselves... What I found, like if they were cry if they cried because they were scared or they were hurt a little bit, sometimes, and I felt at first I would feel like a bad parent, but I was like, I got. To, by the time I got to them, the crying was done. 
I found the next time their cries were shorter because they were like, oh, I, I figured my way through this last time. Mm. So I know at the end of this, I'm actually going to be okay. So it was an accidental good lesson for me, but it was accidental because I just was not, I didn't have enough t- man hours to focus yeah. on all three of them. And look, for sure, I put too much responsibility on my oldest son sometimes. I think about what I asked a seven-year-old to do. Yeah. Listen, I need you to watch your, your brother. I mean, he's six months old. Yeah, but here's what I need you to do. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But you don't, when you're in it, you yeah, don't. Yeah, you don't in it. You, you were in it, man. You, you don't think yeah. about it at all. It, it's so bizarre. I, now, looking back, I'm like, I can't believe I asked him to do that shit. Survival. Oh, my God. Yeah. But I do think if we have a second child, like, and this is so stupid when people liken dogs to children because it's just not even the same league. But I will say, when we had a the first dog, FIFO, and he was sick, and it was he almost died. And then the second dog came, Bitsy, as a puppy, and yep. it was way easier. Because I was like, like oh, I know dogs. this yeah. dog's barfing? Yeah. I don't give a shit. He, if he's not barfing more than five times, there's no need for the vet. And you're yeah, right. if, you, if you have a second yeah. kid with another guy, I think <laughs> you'll, um, you'll totally you'll have a different approach. Who do you think will have a uh, I don't baby? know. We should make a list. Him. We should write a list and see what we think, who we think would be I, the best. Uh, I have to get to know him because he'll have some you know, relationship with my son. So. Would you, you, would you want him to be an athletic man? or I there... would love for him to be an athletic <laughs> man. Yeah. Okay. Is yeah. that what you're looking for? Like a tall kind of track athlete or yeah, like a football player yeah something Someone's, like that some, some a good build and speed yeah <laughs> you <laughs> you can't you can't teach speed so. this is the thing or size yeah size and speed you yeah. gotta be born with so we maybe we should hold you some should auditions eyeball that for sure okay i'll keep my eyes peeled here's a clip from uh josh's new special he started in, Bo- oh. in boise oh no looks exciting let's see what the fuck are you doing in there who is that who are you? I'm just, man, you in the fucking gutter, man. No. What the fuck is down there? Huh? What the fuck are you looking for? Uh, my cat. Your cat? <laughs> Wait a second. This is a guy filming <laughs> from the street into my, a gutter. My cat. My cat. That doesn't sound like Wait, it. is that is that real? This is real, yes. yeah, yeah. Do you think that there are drugs? <laughs> and or mental illness involved. <laughs> well, for sure, I was about to say he this didn't is... drop his cat. He dropped a bag of something, yeah. and he was like, "Well, I'm yeah, going, I'm in. going <laughs> in." This is our trauma segment. <laughs> <laughs> that is like a Name bad real life scene from it. Yeah. Do you know the opening yeah, of? No, no, I, I can't watch it. it. I won't watch it. I haven't it. seen it. Too scary. Great, great. I'm gonna also send you a video. Okay. That is one of my favorite. Now, there's one video I do want to show you guys that I mean, you can't just show. All willy nilly, but I'm gonna show. You, this is my favorite. Uh, this is my favorite video that I've seen in a long time. You You're can, gonna message it to me. I'm sending it to okay. you right now. Okay. Um, it, there's a guy in the sewer right now. Now, yeah. how did he get in there? I don't know. Let's let's watch more. Yeah. How do you get in? There? Um, <laughs> what is that? that noise? Sweet. He's singing "Amazing Grace." <laughs> He sounds like he's taking a shit, though, does. doesn't he? Yeah. In the yeah. sewage system. That's meta. Yeah. <laughs> but that's and a good place to shit. It is a good place. Here's, let's see what the guy says. Ask him. Huh? How'd you get down there? Uh-huh. How'd you get down there? Uh-huh. I rode my bike. You, you can't ride your bike in a fucking car, man. <laughs> I'm almost there. Where? And he also said I rode my bike. Like, he's shitting. He's shitting, right? Why you go down to the gutter to shit? Yeah, I mean it's nice. I mean he's saving water. I like that. He's I appreciate. He's an environmentalist. Yeah. He's an environmentalist. Everybody, <laughs> whole other level. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I You're hate? You're going the wrong way, man. <clears throat> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I'm going the wrong I hope that's way. Al Gore down there. Oh my god! <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I uh, hate when people go, huh? Like, yeah. you know, you know what I'm asking. What's yeah, being I'm asked. asking you why you're in the gutter Shit. right now. Yeah, what? Huh? Yeah. By the way, yeah. even if you didn't hear the question, you know the only question I'm asking. Yeah, you. yeah. 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 Why I'm are you in the gutter? What time it is? Yeah. What the yeah. fuck is going on? Yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking stuck. What are you on? Stuck. That's what Nothing. You're, you're on something, man. You are in the fucking he gutter, man. He's I'm coming out. Oh. No, you're not. Oh fuck. He's trying to. Wait, I, don't I think that, that that grunting is actually him trying, trying to get, get out of the pipes, trying to get through a space. Yeah, 
Oh. That's why he's like, I'm trying to get. So do you think he got in? You know how in some streets they have that little opening where the water drains? Yeah. Uh-huh. So you think he slides in one of those? Well, he rode his bike. I don't know if you heard him. Oh, yeah. So. But yeah I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Well, no wonder he's stuck. He it's hard to ride that, a bike down there. He went there. into that huge opening on a bike path. Yeah. And then now he's like, I forgot which way that is. I got to get out. <laughs> so many drugs. Well, I've never seen no shit like this before in my entire life, man. What the <laughs> fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? I mean, it sounds like there's some work being done down really, there. Yeah. Really is he going to have to cut his arm off to get out? Is this know. a James Franco 127 yeah, hours kind of situation? <laughs> I'm stuck in the shit. But this is Damn, a terrible... Bro. Like, this is a terrible... How... I'm, well, we had, uh, I was just thinking we had Dr. Drew here last week. Yeah. And we showed him a bunch of our classic clips. And, and and he voted on whether there's drugs or trauma involved. <laughs> and he, we would be laughing or like mental this, illness. and he'd be like, "Yeah, this is just very sad." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm already thinking like we gotta play this for him, and he'll be like, "Yeah, no, this is not good." Yeah, it's the difference between a doctor and a comic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys, there's so much trauma here. Yeah. Yeah. So much. We were like, ah, yeah. their trauma is our healing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> True. Totally. So so true. Okay, one more. What is that? God damn. Amazing. He's singing again? He's high as fuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's just high. Uh, he no, fucked yeah. up. The video I sent you is yeah. my favorite non dirty video that I've been sent in a long time. Okay. Because now most of the videos I, the most of the videos I get are like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that dude, by the way, why that song? Like, what is it? That's Does his, he think that's he's dying? His, no, that's his, I'm so fucked up right now, I gotta focus on something else. I need the Lord. You ever done that where you sing, like you have a song to get through a bad time? <laughs> like it takes you to I, your happy place? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, during Pap Smears, yeah. I sing Oklahoma. It just gets yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Why. I'm not going to lie to you. If you were like, I'm going to give you 10 tries and write out two se- a two sentence description of what a Pap Smear is, I'd be like, Ugh, I don't know that I could do that. It's just the worst. Yeah. Could you, do, if I said right now, what's a Pap Smear, could you tell me what it is? Uh, you uh, scrape the pussy out. Oh my God. <laughs> Josh, do not encourage this what? pussy talk. What? He's always like, are you going to the pussy doctor today? <laughs> you scrape the pussy out? Oh That's what it is. God. Is that what it is? You don't scrape a pussy out, dummy. What do you do? Okay, they insert a speculum into well, the vagina. Well, I knew that part. Yeah. They open it up. They holler in there. And, and like, then they what? put their tongue in there. And then, no. yeah. <laughs> and then they, they take a swab of your cervical mucus yeah and they put that into a petri dish and, and they culture it and that's a pap smear scrape the pussy out i had it right yeah i mean it's 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 a he, it's, he's right he, it's horrendous yeah I'm is surprised it they bad. haven't figured out how to do it with like lasers or something so i don't have to feel that it and really doesn't second. sound hey i had this movie oh, it's the worst. this video queued up I don't, I don't know what it is should i just play yeah, it? yeah it's funny it? it just so you know it's a it's a dude trying to pronounce three words okay okay hold on it's and there's a lot of great nuance to the just yeah, it's one of my favorites. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Genesis one, base one. In the beginning. In the in the bini in the beginning. Yeah. In the yeah. yeah. yeah that might be it. Uh, in the listen properly in in the beginning yeah in 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 the beginning in the beginning he shimmies he does a little dance he looks for some help in in the beginning (laughs) poor guy oh my god i mean he can't he can't do it my favorite thing about that is who wrote the speech for him like, yeah. didn't they run one word? Hey, listen, here. And didn't he look and be like, I can't say that word. Which word? The one right at the beginning. Yeah. It's the a benini. Tough word. The inda benin, inda, inda benining. It's the poo poo. Yeah. 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 It's <laughs> the poo poo. Poor dude. Remember yeah. the poo poo guy? Oh, yeah. I one of the things they do is called eno leaking, where they, a, a man's anus is leaked like this. 
by the other person, like ice cream. Like ice cream. And then what happens? <laughs> even poo poo comes out. The other poo poo is out, huh? and then they eat the poo poo. That is a, that is a <laughs> preacher God. in Africa. I forget which country. Um, maybe Ugandan or something. And he was talking about homosexuality, and he's saying that gays eat each other's shit. He's I don't. Like, th- yeah. I don't think that's right, is it? I no. I don't that's think right. that's right. But he, right. that that was the information that <laughs> that's his pitch. Yeah, that's as, why. as to why you shouldn't why be gay. In the beginning. In the beginning. <laughs> Dude, he, he tried so many times. Oh, I like know. The, it's the a valiant that's, effort. That's the part that makes me kind of sad, though, is that he didn't just go. You get it. And then, like, next sentence. My favorite part is that he turns to the people behind him to help, yeah. and they're just like, beginning. Yeah. 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 This is one. This and he one. goes, yeah. Like, he was given up. In the yeah. In the in the beginning. Yeah. In the <laughs> in, in, uh, in yeah, look at her. She's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> she's not helping in at no, all. No, you're talking just about like, bro. Yeah, yeah in, just like in, beginning. In the yeah, beginning. A, in beginning. In the beginning. Not that important. The first. In, the dance. Yeah. In the beginning. Yeah, he's like, help in, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> help me, you <laughs> asshole. Look to the side of the stage, like. Yeah, yeah, dude. They were like, That's whatever. really funny, though. That poor Aww. guy. In the beginning. In the beginning. In. And one point he points at the crowd like he's gonna say it confidently. In da bini ding. Just to start singing that. To go it. I'm, when things start to go bad, I'm just gonna start going. Uh, nothing. No, I, I I rode my bike. I rode my bike. I listen. I do think that people don't ride their bike enough nowadays, though. So I I. That's very true. I'm happy to see somebody out getting their exercise. Did you see this? Um, this Australian, uh, news team. So like, there's an Australian news show, and one of the anchors, uh, is like, they're about to go live, like in a couple minutes, mm-hmm. and she notes that the three people who are about to appear on, appear on camera are wearing white, and she's livid. And she's like, tells the other one of the women, like, I already fucking told you that I was wearing white. But it's like, this is all stuff that wasn't supposed to air, but it was captured and then released. I, I love need it. Julie to put a jacket on because we're all in white. I asked, her, <laughs> I asked her before we came on, Julie, you need to put a jacket on. Blood out. I, I haven't had time. Does someone come on? I told you. I told you two hours ago. We know Amber, in chat room. This is not. So I'm sorry. I've been flat out. Well, honestly. I'll call wardrobe and we'll get something. No, I- if you give me a second, if we can ask, I, I'm not sure who your lineup is today. If, if there's a, just a jacket Nothing. floating around out there, ask her. Unless you want to run down and see if there's a jacket. No, you're right. No, open. you're right. Because you told me um, it's fine, Sandy, but there can't be three of us. No. And I, is, and I made this clear two and a half hours ago. Amber, if it's an issue, I can, I can get on yeah, out of here. It is an issue. Go and grab a jacket. I, Jenny, someone, uh, someone able to grab me a jacket, please. It does it look an ridiculous. Issue. I wasn't, I wasn't saying really it good, for no reason. The wardrobe girls would be furious downstairs. I'm wearing also, blue for one, Amber. I, I don't know, want to be having this. I know, but it doesn't look like it. it someone, that, Jenny, get someone, in, some, a producer. I told her there's two and a half. There's one hanging up outside the control room. Just get it on. There's a black one hanging up. There's a black one hanging up on the back if of there's, my if, one. If there's an issue, I'm, I can just head on out and get back to work because I'm, I'm flat chat. I genuinely forgot. I know it's not your issue, but I did ask Thank Julie you. two and a half hours ago. I mean, this is like no, 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 what, how, the girl on the other end doesn't yeah, care. Cool. As long as that she's allowed to wear hers because she already cleared we'll it. Go for that. Oh. Time now to head into the chat room and joining me today, psychologist Sandy Ray in Melbourne and Nines Julie Snook in Sydney. A big welcome to both of you. Thank you for joining Hello. us. Good afternoon. <laughs> uh. And this is a psychologist, which is my favorite part. So it's somebody who's probably I mean, she has to have some I don't know sense of. Uh, yeah. But if anyone, the middle girl should wear the jacket to break to up the white, white, white. I agree. Like, she should be the one wearing but a jacket. But she told the other girl, I'm wearing white. Two and so a half hours two ago. Two and a half hours ago, as oh, Josh was noting. That Jesus she, Christ. She mentioned 18 times. Yeah, she did say, she did mention. Did I fucking tell you what I was wearing two That's and a half That's what she wanted ago? to say. Yeah, exactly. What she wanted to say was, I made it pretty fucking clear. I'm wearing white. Two and a half hours ago. Yeah. So this ship is not getting that. Yeah, she yeah. was not. I don't 
know why women care. Like it women seems, are like. It seems really trivial. Like if that was three dudes, stupid. they'd be like, "Hey, we're all wearing yeah, white." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> make a joke about it. <laughs> we look like the fucking Temptations. Let's do yeah, this. Yeah, here, we here we go. go. Backstreet Boy segment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a five minute segment. Uh, but women always care. Like I went to the party and she was wearing the same thing. I was like, "Who fucking? I don't know." Yeah. No, I I well I listen. I hope nobody's wearing what I wear oh, because wow. I well you were. Wearing some cool I, stuff, I you know I got structure. I got a structure oh, shirt, structure and card. Like, I got a, my own structure card, and <laughs> I remember that's where I, people knew. I just saw this. Was this lady getting a pap smear? Oh my fucking cut! Oh shit! My cut! My cut! My cut! Yep. Oh. That's what it's. That's what it feels. That's like. what it feels like. When do you get your pussy scraped out? Yeah, you get your pussy, pussy scraped. scraped. Hey, I want to go back to one of Josh's things he mentioned. Go uh, for it. Greatest strength and weakness as a oh, okay. Go ahead. What do you think it is? Yours? No, or yours. Your greatest strength. God, yes. I mean, you fart powerfully. God damn it. I think you're so confident in I, your bits. Like, you really um, I you can stick make with them. Um, mediocre shit sound okay. No, that's not what I mean. Oh, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I can sell some bullshit. <laughs> because, by the way, okay is also mediocre. There you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah so it, you really. But no, I think you. Look, I, I watch you and I could never deliver things the way you do. You know how you bench the way you said you just kind of your stillness? Yeah. But that, like, can you move, man? But dude, that is powerful to hold that many people for that long in that being that still. Yeah, I'd mm. say that. Like your your deliberateness. It's really like because that's one of the things that makes young comics scared. Is right. Be, Definitely. Right? Yes. Scared of, well, of any moment of stillness or something. Well, you yeah. see Chris Rock, and he paces, paces. nervously yes. like a panther. Yeah. And that's nervous energy, I believe. I've always felt that that was energy that is, oh, fuck, I better, if I'm not moving, but it not also gonna listen. But it also keeps an audience uh, engaged. In exactly. Words, they, that's what I'm yeah, saying. When yeah. he's afraid of planting it yeah. and being still, because yeah. that's a different muscle. Yeah. That's a totally different mindset of how to engage the audience. I've always... I don't know. I've always looked at his comedy as that stalking the stage fits his material. It does. It's the energy keeper. It's a great mix for him. I think it really fits his energy. It fits his material. It fits how he attacks. It's the pacing, yeah. Yeah. I I, I can't, like, if I work, I can physically walk like that. Yeah. I wouldn't, like, my material would feel weird coming out, you know? Like, it would not, it wouldn't uh, work for me. Yeah. I I would, it would feel like, Two things that just don't align. Well, what do you think your biggest weakness is? Man, that's interesting. Um, that's a scary one, you know, when you start thinking about your biggest weakness. Um, I don't know, man. I, I... Is it as a performer or a writer, do you think? Do you think your strength lies on stage or in front of the computer? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, some people are better. Well, I think it's prob- the weakness is probably then in writing because I don't write physically. <clears throat> like, I used to write a lot, and I've done the last three hours with basically no writing, just on stage. Oh, writing on stage. Writing on stage, which my only, like myself, um, you know, analysis and, and, and diagnosis I would give myself is that it's good to be able to do the writing on stage, but I should add more of the writing off stage to enhance it. Because the few times that I've been like, hey, what's that bit, and actually written something down, it got better. Mm-hmm. So... It's, it's like a laziness where I go like, yeah, but I, it's good enough. Like it's working without me doing that. Yeah, but if it know? works. Then, well, it why works, is it a bad thing if it works? It works, but I do think it can work better. In other oh, words. You feel like you're not doing en- enough on that end. I do. I do. And like, I mean, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Like I admit it. I don't like to admit it. I know it's 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 like, like if you're talking about like working out, you're like, yeah, I lift weights. And they're like, do you ever do cardio? And you're like, nah, but I mean, I'm still strong. Yeah, yeah, you know? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're just like, I, I know it can get better. And um, it's laziness. It's like a reluctance to do the more work. I do the same thing. That's what I think. I do the same thing. You write on stage more than you do. You Way you write more a ton. on stage. You I write, write on stage. stage. I don't do that. I know I'm you write a lot on stage. Deliberate. You write person. in front of a computer. Now, let me ask you something, because... I can't do it on stage. When I write in front of a computer, sometimes I get so worried about the exact words... Yes. ...that my naturalness goes away, because I'm thinking about the exact words that I wrote. I totally get that. Do you? Does that happen to you? But that's when you let go of the written... Like, I know what the punch is, but I know that that part is going to be worked out on stage, because I'll find my flavors. 
up there. I just know that that's the writing and then that's the performing. You'll find your you'll find your cadence and shit up there. I don't know. That's what I think. But that's so for you. You write, but the punchlines you write, you write, you write, write. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could do more of that. I I feel like I'm better grabbing the idea of a story. For me, when I tell a story, a new story, like I'm working on a story right now, that is like 16 minutes long, and I would love to get it down to. 12 or 13 is what it feels like it should be. Is it a recent thing to happen? Yeah. I have to pee, sorry. <laughs> but it's... Okay. I'll be right back. I, right. I, the way I go with my stories is that I tell them exactly how they happened yep. the, the first five or six times. Yep. I don't add any jokes. Yep. I don't try to be funny because to me, the funny, if the more truth I can take with me, yep. the better. Do you do, is that how you do it also? Totally. I tell, I tell exactly how it happened mm-hmm. and then... I kind of, by like the tenth time, I'll be like, "All right, like it, it has already some some good laughs in it." So yeah. I know, like, I, I like this story. I'm gonna stick to this story, but then I'll start to be like, uh, "Something about this section is just it's a lull." Yeah, it's boring. yeah. And so I'll either try to cut something out of it or add something to it. You know, like add some jokes to it, add an an enhancement. To the boring part. That's my question then. So when you enhance, <clears throat> I, I've found for me there's two ways you enhance, right? You can either enhance through heightened reality mm-hmm. or enhance just through punchlines. Yeah. Right? How what would well, generally what do you do? The heightened reality or do you go a punchline route? Do you take I, it my inclination will be the heightened reality. Mine too. And then I say like six months into telling that story. And I'm almost like, I, I know the parts that I really like, but it still has bland parts. I'll start to add a punchline or two to certain sections because I feel like, oh, that's really what it needs to be a completed story. Like it needs a few jokes. That's interesting. I, yeah. I, I do almost the exact same thing. Because for me, like say I have a story about, well, there was a story that I tell in the special. And the reality of the story, I was telling a story about how my... Dad, well, do I want to ruin the joke right now? Mm. No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. But anyways, but there's a there's a way to where you're like, okay, this is what really happened, and say it was something physical that happened. You're like, okay, that physical isn't funny enough. I still like the story, but what what part of being physical can make it funnier? You know, what's the funniest physical thing? Kicking the nuts. Okay, well, is kicking the nuts funnier than slapping the face, which is funnier than pushing the chest? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yes. Do you do the same way where you amplify the reality like yeah, that? Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. And so for me, it or helps. Or like it'll be something I'll be like, you know, I don't know. Some some action happens, and like in reality, the guy that I set up in the story, let's say, didn't say anything. Yeah. But I'll give him a line Yeah. because it's funny. And it kind of and it help and you, the move this the story is still moving along, you know. But like it gets, it gets a big laugh, so it makes the story more engaging, you know. So, but like that guy really didn't say, but it doesn't that exact thing. He also you're, what you're having him say doesn't take away from the truth of the story. No, right, no, right, 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 right. Yeah, it's just like I mean, it's like seasoning, you know. It's like I call it a little salt and pepper. Yeah, right? like you just you're just adding a little bit to the thing to make it taste better. Yeah. You know? So it's like yeah, but I'm not like. I'm not saying like, and then he pulled out a gun, and you know what I mean. Like, it's not this whole made up thing. Right. It's just it's an it's an enhancement. It makes me laugh when people are like, "Is that story true?" I'm like, "Did you laugh?" Yeah. Yeah, I laughed. Then who fucking cares if it's true? The weird ones are like when I got there's stories where I've told like verbatim, and then people are like, "I can't believe you can make something like that up." I'm like, "This is a hundred percent, hundred percent." A story on my YouTube page about my favorite practical joke ever. Yeah. Which is, but I, it's true, and I left the most outrageous parts out because I'm like, there's no way anyone's gonna believe this shit. That story, above all, people are like, that's not true. Yeah, and I'm like, no, that 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 story is actually true. Yeah, I mean, like uh, I know the the Mike Tyson story that I told. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. Uh, in my special, and then I told part of it on Con- on Conan to him. People were like. Did you did you ever uh, have you ever really met him? Is he mad that you made up a story about that? I'm like, what? You think I came up with an elaborate Mike story, Tyson <laughs> Mike Tyson story? Yeah, and then yeah. like and then just scripted fifty lines to one another, and they're just like, isn't that what you guys do? Like, I mean, people have their own imagination. Sure. How, I'm like, dude, I'm just telling you exactly 
how I met this guy on a plane. Like, a- isn't that amazing? When the exact story, you don't even have to like. It's almost stealing. You're like, so I, I can just tell the story tell beginning it. to end. Yeah, yeah. No jokes. I don't have to add any jokes. No. And I'm a genius. Yeah, and then people are like, <laughs> yeah, that's a crazy, you know, story. I'm like, I just tell you about how I met a dude. You, yeah. You'll find when the the kid will just start to supply endless hours of material. I'm waiting for it, man. Yeah, they get. That's why I had them. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I want that. <laughs> oh, it is coming. It's, I can't yeah. wait for that stuff of like. And then I said, "Go fuck yourself." Yeah. And I'm like, "You can't wait say till that. my my son stole one of my edibles." Oh, oh my oh, god. No. How old was he? He was probably sixteen at the time. 15, oh, I thought you meant fifteen like or sixteen. No, not like kid, kid. But he stole one of my edibles, and um, cheap chew. Yep. Yeah. Stole a cheap chew. Decadose. dose. Yep. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's in my drawer. That's a lot. Oh, 175 milligrams. That's strong. And I went back. I went down into his room, and he was fucked up. He's out of his mind. But I was just trying to play with him a little bit. You did? Oh yeah, man. Like that. Listen. Anybody who doesn't, once your kids have pubes, did you do you're allowed thing? to fuck with them. Yeah, did you you're go, fine. Um, you're out of the woods. Yeah. Because it, it seems to me my inclination would be to not act like you know. That you, right? Or so did you? I go down and he was literally, he was laying on his bed doing this with his fingers. Yeah. And I go down into his room. And right when I walked in, I am like, no, oh, he's fucked up. Like, there's yeah. no teenage boy yeah. laying on his bed just fiddling life. with his fingers. Tapping his fingers on his chest. <laughs> so, and I said Keep to him, going. I go, what are you doing? He goes, just trying to figure something out. And I was like, oh, oh, boy. oh boy. And I said, what are you trying to figure out? He goes, I don't think you'd understand. And I was like, <laughs> all right. And I said, can you stop doing that for a second? And he was like, I don't think so. And I go, just do his stuff for a second, man. And he looked up at me, and he had this huge grin on his face. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh, he's boy. clearly. Yeah. And his- You're like, the DEA is here he, right now. Oh, I, I love fucking, I'm like, hey- you know, I don't know if you know this, but people actually can't OD from weed. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love, listen, If when your kids get to be a certain age, my kids fuck with me, too. Like, they have videos of, I scare easily, so they yeah. have videos of them scaring me, but we have scaring contests, like, all that stuff. We go back to fun, right? Yeah. We got to have some fun. Yeah. Practical jokes are a lot of fun. I took all the underwear out of my son's drawer one one week, and I, I replaced it with panties that had the days of the week on it. <laughs> oh, that's great. And he just screamed from his bedroom, these aren't my underwear, I'm not wearing these. <laughs> and I was like, just put your Mondays on, let me see what they look like. <laughs> and he, Mondays. <laughs> but you know, but yeah. like they grow up with a sense of humor. Of course. My parents were the opposite, like they never would let me play with them, but the humor came from the suffering, I think, like the misery. Yeah. Like I've been doing my mom a lot with you, where you're like, uh, will you pass the remote control? You pass the fucking remote control. Like yeah. everything was uh, she's confrontational. So combative, yeah. Is it your mom combative? I think you need to add a syllable. Um, no. Combative. Combative. There it yes. is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, my parents were the opposite of playful, but I think that made me want to be more playful. Definitely. Yeah, that's made me true. Sillier, you you, like, you had oh, a desire. For, by the way, greatest strength for you. Oh God. Is it tits? I don't want to answer this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big mushy. Purples. Yeah. You're always saying that. Lately. Purples. What? They're purple. I got purple nips since I had my kid, and they just haven't changed back. And they're not totally purple. Like like yes, a Barney they purple. They're less purple. No, they're purple like skin, like purple man. Like they're less purple. purple. They're less purple than they were. They never. I used to have nice pinkers, and uh, I have uh, meaty nipples. Do you? <laughs> well, the nipples themselves aren't ne- they're meaty, but the areola is <laughs> is me. I have a meaty areola. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> What what do you? Oh God, I'm so self loathing. Don't ask me. Well, then what's shit. your what's everything. your weakness? What's, what's your, your weakness? weakness? All of it. Just everything there sucks. There you go. That's that's the. That answer. could be your strength too. <laughs> <laughs> I I'd say my weakness is I bail too quickly on premises I want to go for. Like I won't stick to it, and I'll just bail because I'm that's not getting the laugh. That's definitely one of mine too. Definitely. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Really? What do you mean? Yeah, like you go like I want to talk about this. Yeah. And I'll pick I'll pick an angle, I'll pick a line, you know, I'll pick like this is how I'll say it. And I'll do it and it's like, eh. And I'm like, mm. And I'll go to like another show, kind of try it there. And then I'm just like, well, fuck that. I just won't do it. But the uh, the concept, the premise is still in my mind. Yeah, like six for months years later. too. You're like, 
You're like, oh, I should talk about that. But then you're like, yeah, but I did try to talk about it. It didn't work. Yeah. You know, you kind of just throw in the towel early. Yes. You know? I'll bail on I'll bail on stuff I know in my heart I want to do. To do, yeah. I just don't know how yet. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, I, I, I got to get a laugh right now. There's too much silence. I got to yeah. go to laughs. Do you ever use this podcast to work on your premises? Mm, yeah. One time I, I took a, yeah. I think inadvertently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. 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 Not trying bits, yeah. but like. Oh, yeah. Inadvertently. Dude. Yeah. The, my, my new special comes out. Uh, January 12th. 12th on Netflix. Congratulations. And What's the name? It's called Disgraceful. <laughs> and um, there are people who listen to this podcast will recognize entire, like almost entire bits that the origin was like talking about something here or finding something here and then talking about a clip. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, that, that's now like, you know, a bit in, a, in, in, my, in my act. Yeah. How many specials have you put out? This is number. This is the third special, but like uh, the fifth, because I did two albums before. So, but the third special, but five hours of stand up. Yeah, stand up. That's pretty fucking That's a lot. great. Very prophylic. <laughs> combative. Very prophylactic. I'm yeah. a combative writer. You're a combative, dude. Yeah, I, I mean, said com- I said combative up until like a year ago. Do you think this will be combative? Yeah. I don't know yeah, why. Yeah. And Maybe I, my I mother said her. it that way. And she's always like, I read, you don't. And I do I not. Like, I, I think, do not say I, I read, you don't. You mean combative? And she was like, it's combative. <laughs> and I was like, I could see that she was serious. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, this is so great that you don't know. <laughs> yeah. You don't know this word. <laughs> and then like, she amazing. looked it up and she was like, all right, I'm going to live over there. <laughs> okay. One, one for Tommy. Hello. Uh. I do have foreign parents. And so I grew that's up hearing true. words incorrectly my whole life. See, that's the difference. She has two foreign parents. I have one foreign parent. So I always had the one to be like, don't listen to what she says. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. I had to figure that shit out on my own, yeah. bro. My, That's why I, I read so much. You're nice English. though. You correct her. I think it's funny when my wife messes things up. Yeah. And I'll have I'll I'll lead her into saying it in you public. Dick. Like she used to say that point is mook. No. Oh my god. So I used to try to lead her down the path so she would say it in front of other people. We always yeah, yeah. that is that's fun. It's just funny is it, for me. Is it we mook have a, a whole, slang term? I think it's moot. Yeah, mook yeah. is not. Yeah. No, mook is a bad word. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, but I know we um, we we always celebrate, um, you know, miss saying words, but also expressions. You know. Yeah. And like even that's something in 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 her act, but like we've always celebrated it. And one that I actually thought, I actually thought that that it was this way for a while, was I thought it was ahead of the curb. Like, like the curb on the on the road. I didn't I didn't think about it like like that Edward it? Norton movie where he curb stomped that. Yeah, day? yeah, yeah. So I thought when somebody's like, "Oh, you're ahead of the curb," I was like, "Oh, like they park well or something." Like I don't know. <laughs> but that would make just, kind of I, sense. I just accepted it. I was like, "Yeah, uh, you're ahead of the curb." Oh, I thought you said ahead on the curb. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Jesus. I was like, "Oh, what kind yeah. of saying is that?" Well, yeah. you're ahead on the curb. You're I'm ahead like, on the curb, man. Uh, no, no. I, I but like it took me. I mean, I've known now the correct version for years, but I'm saying for many years, I did not. I many thought years. Eminence Front was living in a trunk. I'm sorry? What? Because we're living in a trunk. We're living in a trunk. Come on. You thought that was? Eminence Front, which is a Pete Townsend song. Because of Eminence Front. I don't know this song. You thought it was li- living in a trunk. Living in a trunk. Mm. Hmm. It's not. Songs you can really get wrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, sayings. Air embarrassing songs singing at the top of your lungs, embarrassing. Do you think this will be Josh at his uh, eldest son's graduation or the, his sixteen-year-old son's graduation coming up? Josh Ingram. Woo! That is so oh shit! Bad. <laughs> oh, I didn't get it. That was good. Oh, oh dude. Christopher Van Leer Rip. <laughs> that was that was hysterical. I got it all on video, and I was videoing me. <laughs> I did. Oh yeah. Oh man. <laughs> when I had the best. This is the best. This is the best. Man, he's a real dad. That is so embarrassing for so, us. Yeah. Why? I know. It's such, such a bummer, a and he missed the moment. I know. But then he had like a really good laugh about it. Yeah. Yeah. See, well, I would have been more pissed about it. I'd yeah, be like, oh, so fuck. Mad. I'd be so mad. By the way, it. as you should have been, yeah. it's the one time that happens. This guy's it's like, the, it's, awesome. <laughs> it's not like, you, oh, I'll get it next week. No, that's it. Yep, that's like, it, there's bro. no more of those. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> 
celebrating it. I, I'm more upset with that cheer. That yeah. was the terrible. That. It's a dad. Woo! It was a bad. Yeah. It was weak. No it was thin. It was like a. Woo! I don't like that one. It's girlish. Oh, man. I, I my <sighs> kids' graduation. Well, all three of them graduated from high school already. You know, my youngest son is 20. Wait, I oh thought, okay, God. I'm sorry. Yeah, my youngest son is 20. Your youngest son is 20? Yeah. What are you, 68? Pretty much. <sighs> Your youngest son? My youngest son is 20. And then what's... And then 24 and 25. My daughter's engaged. She lives oh with a dude. God. And you have four grandchildren. And, I, and my oldest son is in the army, and I got four grandchildren. Which is so crazy. You're like our age. It You're is younger than me. Ins- it's insanity. Uh, it's insanity. Like sometimes so you're de- you're definitely. I mean, unless something horrific happens to you, yeah, going to be a great grandfather. I know that's crazy. I I I've thought of that before because when I think of great grandparent, yeah, I think of somebody who's like one step in the grave, one how, foot in the grave. Right? How old is your eldest grandchild? He's five years old. Gonna be six. Okay. I mean, theoretically, if he has one in his early to mid twenties. That's 20 years from now. I mean, like, that's not, it's not that crazy. Well, let's put the math together. So if he has one at the same age that my son had it, which is at 20, <sighs> that's 14 years. 15 years. years. Yeah, 15 14. years. Okay. <laughs> that's crazy. There is a chance that if, if his kid has a kid early, I could be a yeah. great, great grandparent. That's wild. Mm. I did a picture that as being like you have to be 104, uh, something like that. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got to. And crack. you're gonna be like 71. Yeah, I'm gonna be 52. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's. I mean, it's it's really bananas. Yeah. I I, I uh, but I will tell you, th- I you know you always hear about the difference between being a parent and a grandparent. It's so much easier being a grandparent. Has to be. You just walk the fuck out. Yeah. They were crying, and I didn't want to hear them crying anymore. I just yeah. turned to my son. I go, hey, I'm going back to the hotel. Yeah. He's See like, you're later. not going to stick around. I'm like, call me when they're done crying. I'm like, <laughs> I did that. I'm going to go back to the hotel where it's quiet. Exactly. But that's what you've earned at that point. I believe I have earned that yeah. right to walk out of the house. You have. I left him $40 for lunch. I'm like, grab some lunch. Yeah. Oh my God. Call me later. See, you're a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get to this right before we, before we wrap up here. So we've been on this thing where, so my father turned 70 um, over the summer. And at dinner one night, I um, and we had the, like a family reunion. Uh-huh. I, and my mom, like I said, who's foreign, I said, Mom, you know, Dad, this is the last night, he's 69. Are you going to 69 him tonight before he turns 70? <laughs> and she was like, what? And then, and then everybody laughed. And then for the like, kind of the remainder of the week, we would always make just these very juvenile 69 jokes. Mm-hmm. We since told our audience every week they have been sending in clips where they videotape asking their parents, are you going to 69 when oh they turn 70? And it's been, it's very silly. And we get the full uh, range of reactions. People are like, you know what? We are. Or like. <laughs> they take it seriously. Yeah, or sometimes they're like, what are you doing? And like they get really upset. The moms get real mad. Yeah, some of the moms get really moms upset. Moms are really not happy with this. Um, because, and then some of them are like, you know, this is so juvenile, which makes <laughs> me laugh the most. So I got some new ones this week. Um, here is uh, the first one asking, are you going to 69 before you turn 70? How old are you? Me? 60. No, how old are you? You are not 60. Just saying. Terry? You're 59. Terry, how old are you? I'm 69. So you're 69? Yeah. (laughs) So on the last night of being 69, will the two of you 69? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> and look, she's look at that face. <laughs> Not happy. Not fa- happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did this guy? I didn't hear what the what no. dad. Dad has a little dog vest on. You see that? He's got a little dog in that. He, oh, it's cute. Yeah. Is that a possum? It could be. That a might possum. be a chihuahua or even a Brussels. Petite Fabricon. <laughs> No. <laughs> See, he's game. You hear him? Yeah. What do you think? The dads are always like, <laughs> like they're yeah. Always the dads best. always want the sixty nine. It's the moms who say no. Well, because it sounds like a good time. Yeah, this is uh, by Jay. Looks like there uh, some people are no- have now figured out to not share their full name. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're submitting it. They're like, I'm Jay. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ah. Otherwise, their name gets read. Um, <laughs> Here's Canadian Christmas by Eric. When you turn 70, 
On the on the last night, are you and Kim gonna sixty nine? Oh, oh Jesus! <laughs> Look at the people's looks. <laughs> oh no! Uh, that one's for the mommies. <laughs> That was fantastic. <laughs> well played. I so. love that. Yeah, that was a good that job, was Eric. That was very good. This one that is, was uh, shock and awe. Yeah. There was and no like, response. A lot of people in the room just kind of looking around at each other. Here's one by D. Mom. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Dad died before he turned 70, right? Yeah. Were you guys planning on his 70th <laughs> birthday? The last night of him being 69, were you guys going to 69? <laughs> 69 dad on his 70th birthday, Mom. Uh, no. <laughs> Okay, so it's official. You guys were gonna 69 on Dad's 70th birthday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Love you, Mom. Love you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> she just walked yeah. away. I love the ones where they're just like, "I'm not doing this." Well, has has anyone asked about the supposed 69 for the dead man? Uh, Is yeah, that, that a new one? That's a new one. Yeah. yeah, that's a new angle. He's like, "Dad died," and she's yeah. like, "Yeah." yeah. <laughs> Were you gonna yeah. 69 him? Like, All right. <laughs> I feel like that adds a different yeah, layer yeah. of like, yeah. Way to be uh, creative on that one. Here is one by Brooke. Huh? Do you think that you and Mark will be together when uh, you turn 69? Why are you ask Do I think I'll, we'll be together? Why are you asking me that? Well, because on like your last night of being 69, are you gonna 69? <laughs> 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 I haven't done a 69 in forever. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best one. Yeah. Finally, a mom yeah. that was funny. And by the way, the dads always yeah. love it. The dads yeah. are always into it. <laughs> but you know what it sounded with the way she said that, it made it sound like, you know, like popping a wheelie on your bike. Like yeah, it was yeah. like a trick she hadn't done. Well, I haven't done that since I was a kid. Yeah, you I know. know yeah. Right. Do you remember though how we were talking about how like when you're a kid, you think that that will be the mountaintop of <laughs> of yeah. like greatness, and mm -hmm. then you do it, and you're like, "This is a total. This, this is, is, is not fun. No, it's not a good one." And like you're <laughs> sitting on my face. Yeah, I can't really enjoy what's feeling good to me because I'm I'm busy over here. It's just work. Yeah, and it's it's really, and it also has to be sometimes when the bodies don't match up. Yeah, it's a real difficult when there's a a height difference. Yeah, it really makes mm. it difficult for one yeah. of the people. Yeah, because you really gotta, you know. Yeah, you gotta. There's some effort involved. It's a real novelty act. A couple you know? more here. Here's Jamie. Um, your mom, you know, how Dad just turned seventy. Yeah. <laughs> on his 69th, well, when he was 69 on the last day, yeah. did you 69 him? <laughs> <laughs> did you? Did you? Mom. Mom! You know, when I don't like the question, I don't answer. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's a good mom answer. answer. That's yeah. a good mom answer. Yeah. And those are some of my favorites is when they're like, not even going to get involved. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just cleaning. I like We've the... gotten a bunch of those when they're like, why would you ask me something? Like that? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I like the ki the kid's art on the refrigerator. Yeah. That adds a little nice and hominess she to it. It goes back to cleaning. I like that's that she's best. like, when I don't like the question, I don't answer. <laughs> And here's the last Mom. one for today. Mom, that's my favorite lead. Yeah, yeah. Mom. And we are, by the way, asking. This is what ten-year-olds ask. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like when you're ten, you're like, yeah. Do you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you sixty-nine? <69?" laughs> so juvenile. But that's why it's so much fun. Yeah. It's so stupid. <laughs> that's great. Uh, that's all right. So here's stupid. the last one by Adrian. This oh, dude, sixty-nine. So this is obviously a big milestone <laughs> on um, no, no. to hit 60, right? So um, Look at those chains. she's struggling to get you it know out. on she's your like, 60, oh. the night of your 69th birthday before you turn you turn 70. Are you guys gonna 69? <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> I don't know again. <laughs> that's, that's the playful mom. Yeah, that's, that's playful fun, mom. I do like how high that dude's jeans were. So do I. Wow. Did you good that, observation? High and tight. Those were high, high and look at that. Ooh, those are oh, good jeans. Yeah. Look at that clearance right there. Yeah. Yes. And look how tight right here. <laughs> I'm saying there's a lot of real estate yeah. from the crotch yeah. up to where that yes. waist is. The buckle. That, yeah. Now a, he's he, definitely a listener. Yeah. <laughs> He for once did the mom reaction. He yeah, was offended he was like, on this one. Mm. He was like, "Come don't on, ask me that. grow up." 
She was like, again? So immature. <laughs> I really feel like it, it, that's going to be a gift that keeps on giving for you guys. Oh, yeah. These like, go on forever. You'll be getting those forever, Oh, right? my God. We, we, get, yeah. we have to cut down the ones we show because we can't just show them for an hour. But, yeah, they, they have not stopped. Um, first of all, oh, where can people see you? Where can people hear you? Where, where can people? Okay. I... Um, at Josh Wolf Comedy is basically all my social media. ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. My special, which I'm either going to call... Wolf with four Fs? How, how they... It's Josh Wolf with eight Fs and two E's. <laughs> it was a German spelling. So, no, no E, one F. Uh, and I have a podcast that I do with Freddie Prince Jr. called Prince and the Wolf. Fucking Freddie Prince That's Jr. nice. He is such a good guy. Wow. And has... He's the got stories, Is right? he 69 uh, you? I'm, that's going to be my next question. Yeah. Uh, the best stories. And the greatest stories about his dad. Mm. Legendary dad. Legendary stories. But plus, great stories. You know, he yeah. had, a, had a, has had a great career. His wife, you know, Sarah, yeah. had a great career. So he, and great stories, dude. Very And very funny. So um, what's, the, what's the podcast called? It's called Prince and the Wolf. Prince and the Wolf is on, it a weekly show. A weekly show on iTunes, uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. I'm, I get. Uh, What's your website? So Comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. All right. Um, thanks first of all for coming over, Thank man. You, Josh. You Thank you, Josh. Thank you very this. much for having me. This I really appreciate it. A lot of fun. You're Super a lot fun. Of fun. Thank you. Um, our let's see. Our we have a lot of uh, songs made by our <laughs> listeners, and the one we're going out on today is called Identi- Identical Dicks. And it's uh, produced, uh, oh, it's a young Patreon, uh, Identical Dicks, produced by Taylor King. Hmm. So we'll leave you with that. Uh, Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys next week. Uh, Thanks again, Josh. Thank you. Thanks, Mommy. I had to make that right turn. And when I made that right turn, some of the shit came came out. I got to work on making those turns into the bathroom. Now I know I'm not bugging. I said, oh, my God. Am I going to make it? On my drive home and my belly is when I get in the house, feel the shit slip out. And the rocket really is a hug. Cause you know I'm trying to bust a nut. Talk about that ego. Tell me where he's at. Come from Los Angeles. Have you ever had your ass hot numb, sir? Cause Hillary Clinton just ate my butt. Now I know what you think about how they didn't dig her. Fuck with your ass, look. Look at the river. Look at the river. Look at the river. Look at the river. Functional bros, I'm not. Shower after I take a shit Then I run Then I run Then I run Then I run OMG You guys are doing good You're doing good Did I tell you about that That shit I did the other day Oh God Just the way I breathe Deep, deep, deep boobs Young Patreon I've always been a lace guy Does it smell that bad? I'd go the retarded Machines within Machines within where the fuck you been? Shit's push the farts out. Moose to beat your heart out. Burst to fetch her on a marathon. Log on a drunk fan, Bert.com. Catch me at the high yoga studio with the brass blown out of my white Lambo. Me and my twin got identical dicks. I hop straight in the shower after I take a shit. Yeah.